wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are, on the surface of this very planet, we call Earth, we welcome you to another exciting, explosive, earth-shattering edition of our twice weekly, I bet for this week, we shall make a twice, twice weekly broadcast here on radio, Biafra, radiating out to the entirety of humanity from where we are stationed this very day. The time now in the blessed land of Biafra is precisely a minute past 7 p.m. in the evening. I welcome you and as I do so, I will of course encourage you to welcome those who are around you. And as it is usual and customary for us, I will say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you, because we are the only people who are listened to genuinely across the entire 24 time zones on this very planet. We are live, we are direct, and heaven is bearing us witness. Because everything we preach on this very noble platform, everything that we say must come to pass because we are under divine instruction from heaven to preach that very gospel that Elohim has mandated for us to preach. That his kingdom may be restored upon the face of this very earth. We want to build the kingdom of heaven on this earth before we go to meet God later on. That was why Biafra was sent into Africa that the light of creation may bathe all those who believe that Biafra should be restored. The same way it is with Israel. That all those that bless Israel will be blessed. Those that curse Israel will be cursed. The same way in Africa, those that support the restoration of Biafra, they will be blessed. Everybody, every entity, every nation, everybody, if you rise up against Biafra, heaven will rise against you and you will fall. And that is why the zoo is perambulating in idiocy and stupidity. They have lost their way and they can no longer come out. That is why we ceaselessly and, should I say, relentlessly offer praise, adoration, exaltation, and glory to the Most High, Chukotika Diyama Prumi Yanine. My name is Enamde Kanu. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra all over the world, the largest mass movement on the face of this very earth. I am also the director of Radio Biafra, the most listened to broadcaster coming out of Africa. I am the director of Biafra Television, but above all and by the grace of the Most High God Almighty, Elohim Adonai El Shaddai, Chukupika Biyama Prumi a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. We are successful at what we do because we are scrupulously clean, unblemished, we are as successful as we are today because God in heaven is with us. We are as exceptional as we are today because unlike any other, we remain whiter than white and whiter than snow. Unblemished. We don't steal. We don't gossip. We are not traitors, we don't backstab, our focus is on the restoration of the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this very earth and that is Biafra and that's what we're here to do and that is what we are determined to accomplish this very year or the zoo will sink. I said this year or the zoo will sink so that they understand how serious we are because this nonsense can no longer continue. I welcome you. We are simulcasting on a whole range of platforms. 
because we know that night follows day that Facebook will mess up. And somebody quite rightly reminded me that soon Facebook mess up again, especially when I am on a crest of actually imparting knowledge to our people that I must also return to that very topic. Because we are quite sensibly observed that I am always in the habit of deviating away from the point that I was making prior to the rude interruption of those that work for Facebook in Nigeria. I do not expect this evening to be an exception. I expect them to attack us, but we are now very sensible. Because this very broadcast you are listening to, if you want to listen and of course to see all the visuals and the graphics, the pictures, the comments and the videos, you must go to my page, Martin Nandri channel on Facebook. I have, I think, roughly about 200,000 um, um, likes because they will not show the amount of followers that I have because the people following me are greater than those who've actually liked my page. And because of that, the Yorubas that work for Facebook, they prefer to show the lower number. All the same, it is about 300,000 people. There are other ones opened up by DFS. Please do not go to those ones. They will capture your details. They will capture your data. And they will start hunting you down without us knowing. You must always, every blessed day, go to my page at Martin Namdekan. We are there live and direct. We are also live on Radio Biafra page. Radio Biafra page, a whole host of people are also hosting watch parties, as a matter of fact. We are on Radio Biafra app, and I'm also glad to announce that the water has been restored. Our mega station in this water is now functioning, I was told reliably before we came on air. I can also tell you that Radio Biafra app is up and running and very clear. We are on satellite. I will encourage those who can afford it, right across the entire downloadable Zoological Republic, including Biafra land, so please go and get yourself a strong decoder. Strong, we are on satellite. Radio Biafra can be received on satellite the same way that you receive Channel TV and all the other Lagos in Space Spaceway Gotham Media. We are on satellite. Please, this is something people need to know. And the ditch and of the decoder doesn't cost more than 7,000 naira only. With 7,000 naira only, and some fuel in your generator, you should be able to listen to Radio Biafra as regularly as you would like to. Very, very important. We are also on a whole host of other app applications as well. We are on Garden Radio, as you well know. We are on Tuning. We are on Sweet Radio. We are also on Simple Radio. If you go to any of these places and say, how can I listen to Radio Biafra? They will take you to one of our platforms. And also there are those who are streaming live on YouTube as well. Uninterrupted, I must say. But for those who are on my page, <laughs> that are the very stubborn ones like me. They must say, that is where the hard calls are. Those who are giving our enemies sleepless nights. Facebook will do all they can. But we are Biafrans, we are IPOB, we always prevail. We always win, in the end we always win. And I said from the beginning when we started this very movement, in the end we always win. Let me very quickly give praise and adoration to the Most High. Without whom we would not be here today. I am a very religious person, very deeply religious man, as some of you may have gathered. But my own religiosity does not come with stupidity. It doesn't. My eyes are very open. My brains are working very well because I have the ability to discern, to know when I'm being lied to, and to also know when I'm being told the truth. Here we have chosen to speak the truth always, regardless of the consequences. That was the truth that I spoke, and they came to my house to kill me, and they killed for the death of my men. As a result of that, my parents died. I also lost my cousin, Adako, and Jack, my dog, as a result of speaking the truth. It is a very costly business, speaking the truth. But here we must speak it, all the days of our lives, because that is our covenant with the Most High 
whom we are now going to give every praise and adoration. I will, of course, encourage you to bow down your heads wherever you are, because we are going to preach this very gospel unadulteratedly. Hey, for you both, I must be exact. I have to be exact. Makandiyuchu, I have to be exact. Let us pray to the Most High. I will pray in English today because there are some people that told me they'll be listening from Eastern Europe that I should try and pray in English as well so that they too can follow. And that is what I'm going to do this very evening. Please, if we may, because the promise of Elohim to the king of Israel, David, is this, that whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will always rest in the shadow of the Almighty, and that is where I feel it is today. And that is why we are untouchable, not because we are strong, not because of anything extraordinary about us, not because we are superhuman, we occupy the preeminence we enjoy today out of thy grace, O Heavenly Father. And this evening your children are gathered all over the world to say to thee that you are our refuge and our fortress, you are our Lord and our God, and in you we repose every trust. We have no strength of our own, no strength whatsoever. Though the enemies encompass us about, you are going to save your children because your words are here and amen. You don't retract it because your God, what you have spoken, it must come to pass. And your promise to our ancestors is that Biafra will be restored. Only if you can seek your face and this generation of IPOB, we have sought your face. We don't worship idols. I have a piece of way now, say, never, ever, ever. And that is why you are piloting the affairs of this very noble movement. This IPOB that we dedicate to your grace this very evening, that you may have mercy upon us. That you may confound and confuse our enemies. As always, they will flounder. They will speak things they do not know about. They think they are slandering on so heavenly Father, but they are helping in their own little blackened way to propagate your gospel. Because those we never knew before, now they know us as a result of the work of our enemies. We give you praise and adoration. We honor thee and we bow before thee. We ask thee to come and take control, to come and take charge of our proceedings this evening. Because you said you will cover us. With your feathers, O Heavenly Father, and under your wings shall we take refuge. Today we proclaim that this very ID will be this very unstoppable movement to restore your kingdom upon the face of the earth. As you promised the ancients, we do so. Singing your praise, O Heavenly Father, we do so. Enabled by your glory that encompasses about, we do so. Knowing that pestilence can never strike us down in darkness, nor shall any plague, including coronavirus, destroy your handiwork. Because many will fall. Those who never believed in us before, now they believe. Those who thought that we are mad before, as a result of all our proclamations, today they now know that we are speaking the truth, the truth that you gave us to speak. That is why everything that I utter comes to pass. Every prediction, every prophecy comes to pass in the lives of men. That is why you have mercy upon us. And that is why Biafra will come that we may build your holy, rebuild your holy temple, restore your presence in our chief as it was of old, that your blessing may dwell amongst us, and every nation will come to Biafra land to pay homage to thee, because you are eternal, because you are everlasting, because you are the ancient of days, you are the Lord of the hosts of all the heavens and beyond. You are, and only thee is the creator of the universe. That is why this evening we proudly proclaim that we have no other God apart from thee. That we shall not bow before any other God apart from thee. 
that this same God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob, this same God of Eli, this same God of God that begat Eli, from which whom we and Aguilera came from, from where the Ephraim sprang from, we shall bow before thee and give you honor and praise, adoration and exaltation. Now and forevermore we pray. He said, He said, He said, For a while I was in the spirit, and this evening we must preach this very gospel. I promised you, somebody reminded me, because as I said, I go through every comment on my Facebook page and those on my Twitter. If you have not joined us on Twitter, I encourage you to do so. Try and register with Twitter and then follow me the same at Mazen Namdekano on Twitter. I think I have about 153,000 followers on Twitter. Go and join us there for the speedy propagation of this divine gospel from heaven. That mankind may know that we mean business. And that is to restore Biafra, which is exactly what we are doing. Once again, I welcome you from the bottom of my heart. Sometimes you may disagree on some points, uh, maybe around uh, our direction, our dimension, perhaps sometimes bordering on our philosophy and our approach. And I also have noticed sometimes, perhaps uh, there are some slight, as I say, deviation from a point of convergence when it comes to issues that matter to our people, matters of spirituality. But here we must speak the truth. Because we have determined, as directed by heaven, that the truth must be preached and spoken. We may disagree, sometimes we agree. I can assure you there are no ill feelings. We are preparing ourselves to run a very vibrant democracy in Biafra land. In Biafra land there will be freedom of speech. It doesn't matter what it is. You have every right to say it. And let the majority decide and judge who is right and who is wrong. That is why we are very, very confident that our arguments are superior. Superior morning, noon, and night. It doesn't matter when you come. If you come, we'll cross you with facts and with figures. Because we are learned. And here, we are learned. For those who may not know, that is why they say, uh, why is it all the time? People say that this idea be that what? Because we are learned. Before we present any issue, before we tackle any problem, we distill it four times. Quadruple distillation of the facts. And your child and come and come. We see what goes into the good part, what goes into the bad part, and what is something to believe that is any. That is who we are, that is the way we operate. We just don't come out and run with any issue. We digest it very well. So that any points we generate as a result of it is explosive and decisive. As we're going to do this evening. I want to, I thought before that we had buried the issue of some people referring, as I promised, that very um, uh, Biafra who informed me. Remember you said you, you're going to be nice to everybody on Wednesday. And I said yes. I'm going to be very, very nice today. I'm not going to, uh, should I say, wake people up. I'm not going to insult anybody if you feel offended by the way that I speak. But the crux of the matter remains that the style of delivery which I have, a little thing gave to me to give, or the means through which this message ought to be delivered, it remains there. We are not going to touch it. This is going to be as interactive as possible. And I will try to get somebody, please. I am not asking you to call me on WhatsApp. At the end of this very session, I will take questions on WhatsApp by text only, not calls. I'm not asking you to call. But I would need somebody who will be on WhatsApp regularly and steadily to help me, to help everybody who is listening to navigate through this program this evening. And I also encourage you, all of you who are listening, to try and do the same. This is what we are going to do today, so we understand. I want to bury the issue of Niger because I came across something before I came live on air. That some people have, you know, sometimes out of shame, they have clung on to a dying name, Niger Delta. They have clung on to it. 
not out of any firm conviction that their position is correct. They are doing so out of shame and humiliation because they do not know what to tell their ginger with masters from the caliphate anymore. They have taken money. You know when you have taken bribe over the years? When you have been bought over? You have no conscience anymore. It is only shame. As I used to say to my Ipure brothers and sisters, in 2012, I told the Ipure brothers and sisters, you are evil. Some said, no, we are not evil. I said, you are evil. They said, no, we are not. I said, because you were trained with money, ill-gotten wealth from abandoned property. Out of shame, that is why we say he prayed not evil, because you stole properties belonging to your own flesh and blood. And lo and behold, they all repented. They repented that today as I speak to you, Ikure is one of the strongest lands we have, IPOB, in very strong and formidable. They understand it. These are people that I respect. When you make a mistake, you say we made a mistake. And you repent from it. The same mistakes that the 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 uh, uh, Igbos made after the war, instead of going to Cross River, instead of going to Epic, to Bibio, to Jagan, to Ekoi, going to Oron, going to Anan, going to uh, Izon, going to everywhere they need to go to Shekiri, everywhere. Go even to Anioma, go to Benue, go to the Gala land to say we are one. Mistakes you are made. There is something called magnanimity. When you are in a position of power, in a position of authority, it is up to you to be magnanimous. They fail to show that leadership. That's what we are suffering today. And I have apologized time and time again for the failure of the post-war leadership, especially in Ebola, for not going and uniting their people, for allowing the Janja weed to use somewhere like go on to decimate our land. That today, when people speak of evil land, they will just say just the five uh, core states. Forget that everybody is evil. Everybody is evil. I said, everybody in the east, you are evil. This evening, we bury this Niger Delta rubbish completely so they will never resurface again. I want to showcase the stupidity of those that still reflect themselves as that. I want to showcase it so that the world will know. It is quite interesting that I'm coming on air when I posted something yesterday regarding somebody that was beating a white man to stupor in America because the white man called him media. He was upset. But this is a name that people are proudly calling themselves in Nigeria, which is Nigeria. A very proud name that some, pe some people who are not well educated are calling themselves, oh, we are nigger delta. They don't know the meaning of it. Some, or should I say, one of them had the temerity, or should I say, the audacity to question this. I call it the sanctity of my assertions. I call it sanctity. Because before I come here to proclaim anything, I research it four times. Quadruple distillation. So that anything we speak is pure and refined. Now, listen very carefully. We are doing what we are doing because people wonder why do we do things? Why do you accept the way you do? I want to address some of the problems that people have. Why do you have this agitation? The way you do it, you you you, you insult the elders, you insult the children, you insult the pastors. I said yes because they are doing something wrong. When you go wrong uh, as children, your parents flog you, not because they hate you. Your mother is the person to discipline you more. Your mother disciplines you more than your father does. When it gets out of her, she will say to you, Oh, I will tell your father when your father gets back. I know you're in such trouble. Does it mean your mom hates you? All that time, as a little child, you are misbehaving and you are being punished or disciplined. Does it mean your mother hates you? It's because she loves you. Because I'm sure when you listen to the song uh, from Chris Nicole Bar, the sweet mother, you start dancing to it. Do you remember all the punishment you received from your mom? No. Because she was doing it for your own good. The same way it is with us here. On radio, here from this platform. The same way it is with IPOB. Anything we tell you, no matter how painful it sounds, is because we want you to be a better person. Because if you're better, we are all better off. 
We are not looking for a Biafra where not point, not, not, not one percent will be comfortable. No, we want everybody to be comfortable. And for us to achieve that, we all must reason at least above a particular threshold. The minimum threshold for reasoning must be attained for you to sustain any civilized society, or else you'll be like the zoo called Nigeria. Today, where everybody knows that there is no head of state, there is no president, there is no vice, there is no army chief, everybody knows that as of I said everybody knows. But out of fear, out of fear, and what I call parochial interest, they all kept quiet. And people are dying, and people are suffering, yet they are all quiet. And now I'm struggling to understand how I can be nice to these people that have seen reason and have refused to acknowledge it. Now, do you understand where the anger comes from? That we not anger born out of hatred, but anger born out of concern for the well being of everybody. How can you be a leader and you hate people? How is that possible? Of course, it's not possible. You admonish people. It doesn't mean you hate them. It doesn't mean you don't want them in behalf. Of course not. We want everybody to come along. And I also want the way I tackle your body is because I actually love them as a matter of fact. I want them to change from their old bad ways and see the folly, see the mistakes they have made, take corrections and become a better people. That is it. Have I ever since I realized and I realized how good the Hausa people are. Do I cast against Hausa people? Because I know in the men they are very good people. Forget about the very uh, um, um, horrible influence of Fulani Janja Buddhism over them. The Hausa people are very good people. Do you hear me cast against them? Sometimes, if, if any of you grew up in the village, you will know that that very child that the mother loves to discipline the most is the one she loves more than the rest of the children. That's the way it is. Because she wants that very child to be useful. I want you to sit where it, or should I say, contextualize what we are saying within this. It is born out of love and affection, not to do with hatred. If we hate people, we can kill them. We have the men to do it. If we want you to die, you would. If I, if I say you will die tomorrow morning, you will die tomorrow morning. I can do it. But tell him said, no, that, no, that is not the job I sent you. You must speak things into them. And that's exactly what we are doing. Out of it. Why would you say if you have if you the, at the same time if you have somebody, you allow that child to put his or her finger in the fire. But if you know the child and you see the child putting his or her finger in the fire, you admonish that child. The child, the baby will cry. If you notice. Now you're going to understand us. I promise that I'm not going to insult anybody, and I won't today. But I want you to listen very, very attentively, please. The Biafra we are building is a Biafra of free men and women who can think, who can stand up and say that our president is dead. What is happening? Why are you people not following the constitutional procedure? We are that fails, they will say to those in charge, you will all go to prison. And they will all go to prison. That is the nation we want to build. Because if there are no sanctions, when you break the law, everybody will do as they like. Is there anything I've told you before that is a lie? I keep asking all of Is there anything I've told you before that is a lie? When I told that Magu was corrupt, did you believe me? When I was campaigning for this or to come out to this, did you believe me? When I said the entire Fulani is corrupt, did you believe me? But now, uh, we've not even started, though, <laughs> and they are investigating them in the USA. More is coming. Today is Magu not implicated in fraud and corruption. I cannot knowingly cast aspersions over anybody who is innocent. If I do, mistakenly, I will apologize for it. But every time I'm saying something, I'm pointing that telling you Asorok is empty. When I announced in July of 2017 that Buhari is dead, I knew what I was saying. How many years ago now? Now, some of you, at least about 80% of you, have now agreed. But out of fear and cowardice, you cannot say anything. We want to build a country of free men and women. Not the same type of useless independence we have in Africa today. We are when somebody speaks, you can pick them up and you lock them up, you kill them. No! No! Because sometimes you learn something from criticisms. You do, you learn from it. Without people deciding you, how can you, 
you will think you are you are God or something. So sometimes criticisms, at least objective ones, allow you to see yourself as a mere mortal, which you are. And you can also learn. I've said it many times. I I don't want people that sing praises all the time. No. I want to know what you're thinking genuinely and honestly within you. Because I'm going to learn from it. I always learn. I learn every day. I read every day. That is the mindset we are going to have when we go into Biafra. That every criticism is valid. Very, very valid. It may be done out of malice. It doesn't matter. At least it will keep you on your toes and remind you never to fail. It's like somebody saying to you in those days, this child is not going to be useful to your parents. You now go out to prove to them that you will be more than useful to your parents. That's the way it is. So you must see it that way. Now we're going to do it very simple. I want everybody, please, those who have it, who have spare gadget, internet access, go to your internet and type in something very simple and common. Very simple and common, please. I want it posted on the page as well, please. I want it posted. Something very simple and common, not too difficult, not too complex. You know, just a simple uh, uh, Google search. Because I want to cure those in Niger Delta of their disease tonight, once and for all. So that anybody say, opening his or her mouth to say, I am a Niger Delta, you know how foolish that person is. I won't, I won't be the one to insult them. You will be the one to insult that very person. Now listen very carefully. I want you to go and look at the origin of the word Niger. Please. The origin of the word Niger. Do you know what I find? When, when Google returns the results for Niger, which is N-I-G-E-R, Niger is, you have River Niger, is that correct? You also have Niger Republic, which is French, French pronounced Niger, we know it's Niger. You also have a state called Niger, in the zoo, called Nigeria, or Nigeria. You also have a people that hide, uh, should I say, their ignorance under the canopy of Niger Delta, which cannot be established culturally, linguistically, or socially. Because before you go into a union with the people, you must have something in common. I have established the historical and immovable, should I say, pointer as to what binds us together as different people. Anybody whose mom ties to this rubber, it is cultural, it is also social, and it is historical. Now, I want them to prove to me what binds a man from a that you have to travel through, a bank can travel through a Nyoma, travel through uh, uh, Anambra, travel through a Nugu, you have to travel through a Bogi to get to Ogoja. I just want the rationale. I want to understand the rationale behind anybody putting a Bini man, Bini, and somebody from Ogoja. Based on what? I ask them. They cannot answer me. Have you done what I asked you to do, please? Have you Googled Niger? Say, where did the word Niger come from? It's something so simple and easy. Where did it come from? A very close India. From where? You will notice one thing immediately. Do you know what you notice? You will notice that uh, there is nothing called Niger. Actually, it's actually nigger. Every result you see returned is nigger. Not Niger anymore. It's nigger. Which is to tell you that Niger is actually <laughs> the corrupt battle of it. I want you to click that one. There is one called Origins of the World. Niger, sorry, Niger. Colon. Origins of the World. You will see it if you're using a laptop to do your search. It should come up as number two on your search results on Google. Please, what we are doing this very evening. It's a bit mundane, but it is very, very important that we learn how to educate ourselves and to reason properly. Because God Almighty said, if people cannot reason very well, I cannot give you Biafra. That is why we have been spending years and years educating our people at least to be able to reason properly. If you go to that very note, you see, what is, let us forget about even the meaning of its origin. 
where did it come from? And then you will now begin to understand uh, what they have done to us. <laughs> what they have done to us. Nobody knows. Now, what they tell here is Nigrita, Nigricia. Now, Nigricia is a region in Central Africa, nearly equivalent to, to Sudan, the home of the most pronounced type of Negro race. Negro race. Are you listening to me very carefully? That is another, that is one explanation. And then, they analyze it, what it is, from Niger. And then they, they kept going. Now, now, listen, you'll be shocked, though. Listen, please. The name Nigeria first appeared in print, according to Dr. Meek, in 1960. It appeared, Dr. Meek wrote in 1960, the first time that anybody ever heard of the name Nigeria was in 1897. I will come to this later on. It was the title of an article, let me carefully, in a leading newspaper written by Miss Flora Shaw. Miss Flora Shaw. And only Flora Shaw can tell the whole world, maybe from beyond the grave, why she brought this name, Nigger, to, to give it to, to Nigerians. So before 1897, the history of your ancestors never existed. As a race, it didn't exist. Now, I want you to understand that this is the reason why Europeans, white people, don't have respect for African people. I want to point it out to you. Now, because if a child, if a little white child is going through his or her history book, and, uh, yes, exactly, I want to know about Nigeria. Well, you know, Nigerians, the child will read that Nigeria never existed, until 1897, when an English girl, her name is Miss Flora Shaw, wrote an article in a newspaper, in the Times actually, mentioning Nigeria for the very first time. Now, if that child is sensible, that child will ask you, but does it mean people didn't exist in Nigeria before 1897? What will you answer that child? Therefore, anybody who subscribes to this Nigeria, Niger this, Niger that, what you're saying is that a white man is superior to you, number one, not me saying it, but you, and number two, that you had no history, you never existed until you adopted this name. Do you see why this name has to go? Do you understand why this name has to go? Now, we continue. If you continue further, you will now go back, go back to the start results again after the origin. You will see Niger. Wikipedia says Niger. A brief history of the world's greatest taboo. Niger, N-I-G-G-E-R. No more Niger. Everything is Niger. All the way through is Niger. In fact, they're saying, where did the N word come from? One says, who, the definition of nigger, what does it mean? It is all there for you to see. This is a name that some people decide to call themselves. If you call a black man nigger in the UK or in Europe or in America, you go to prison. Now, I'm asking myself, on what basis should people get upset when they call a nigger a white man? You say it's racist. On what basis? Why should you get upset when a white man calls you nigger? Why? Because the most populous, allegedly, black country in the whole world is Nigeria. Their names are nigger. They are nigger. People that come from a nigger area. So why should you get upset when a white man calls you nigger? Why? I keep asking that. Why? And now on top of that, and what does nigger mean? Nigger means uh, darkness, evil, bad. You are in Nigeria, a place called Nigeria, and somebody is saying that even our own delta, we are a river, which is an um, river, flows into the sea. They are putting on the apparel of another nigger, inside a nigger already, double darkness. 
And that's why I want that picture posted of Nigeria to see how dark it is in the southern part of the African coastal region. People don't know when they use their mouth to bring curse upon themselves. And I keep asking them. You have given birth to a, a son or a child, or maybe you are planning to get married one day to give birth to children. Are you telling me that you are going to name your child absurdity? Is that what you are telling me? Are you going to tell me that you are going to name your child evil? Are you telling me you are going to name your child nigga? Of course not. Of course not. Then I am asking you, why do you accept it? A name, a derisory, insultive name. You say now the time insults you all the time. But the name you are answering is an insult. The white girl that gave it to you, gave, didn't give it out of love or, or any care or concern, gave it to you out of, out of derision. She wants to, 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 to dehumanize you. They anglicized it. Niger. Nigeria is nigger. That's the correct one. But that is why, can you see that if you go to Google and you put in, where did the word Niger, didn't put nigger, where did the word Niger, everything you see is nigger, 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 all the way through. Because they can't lie. Can you see it now? So when you say, I'm a proud Nigerian, you're saying, I, I'm a... I'm, I'm a proud darkness. Let me go to somebody I've sent it to me. I don't have their name. Their name is not here. Somebody sent this thing to me on WhatsApp right now as we speak. Let me see what the person's name is. See if we have their name here. He's a retired professor. I'm not mention his name. He is a retired professor of medicine and biomedical engineering at UNM. He sent this thing to me. I won't mention his name. But right now he is a visiting professor to Futo. These are the people that listen to us. He wrote, he sent me something that this means he is following. And Prophet, thank you very much. He is following. He sent me the Wikipedia. He sent me the origins of the world. And also he is asking for Niger, don't, don't forget. But they are sending him results on nigger, 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 everywhere is nigger. Now do you understand it? Now do you understand where you caught yourself? You brought shame upon yourself. And you want white people to feel sorry for you. Whereas the name you're answering is exactly how they're treating you. They treat you like a nigger. And you're upset. And you're crying. And you're saying black lives matter. Whereas there is a place, there is a, in fact, even two countries. One is a nigger. The other one is nigger area. Does that make sense to you? And I keep asking you, does it mean that somebody from Obo, she has a relationship with somebody from Niani in, in, in Niger Republic? But it's, it's not nigger. And the funniest and most awful part is that there are black people willing to die to defend an insultive name given to them by a, a, a white girl. That is, you know, when, when you think about it, you become shocked to the bone marrow. You're telling me that people are prepared to go to war, to kill themselves, to arrest you, to detain you without trial, over a name given to them in 1897, very shortly, they were here. They say, oh, I don't know the name of the people, I just say, you know, this, they, they look black and they're nigger. Just nigger. Now you understand this? And let me tell you, go to, in fact, read the one on Wikipedia. To understand. When I say, so as a Nigerian, you are already insulting yourself. Not to name the kind of insulting you. You are, you are an insult to yourself. I want to bring this whole Niger Delta of you. You are in a nigger area. And you are naming a part of the land of God Almighty in heaven. Nigger. I think you must be, uh, I, I say, I'm not insulting anybody, but I think they must be mad. Honestly. In the land of the Most High. Do you know you are occupying the center of the earth? Zero latitude and zero longitude. The very epicenter of humanity. And do you also know that the continent of Africa, every other continent have moved. Only Africa remains in one place. Are you aware of that? I'm sure some of you may have heard of tectonic plates. You know, about, you know, volcanic, or should I say, the happenings that goes on in the earth crust. You know, expanding the continents. So you don't know that at the time, that South America and Africa were together as one place and South America broke off. All of them have been drifting. That is why you have earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Don't you know that? 
Because the earth is, is like a place, like a glass. It's, it's sitting on a mountain magma. So it's always moving and shifting. But only Africa has remained in one place. It has never moved. In one place, it has never moved. And you, that you represent light itself, a little white girl was sent by the Times newspaper of London, came to Africa, uh, after traveling, he uh, decided to write about niggas. Uh, and they gave it to you as a name. And you adopted it. You're a nigger. That is, that is the highest insult in the world. And you're telling me, somebody is now telling me that I'm insulting them. When you are a bottom of yourself, you are insulting anything except I'm a Niger, you are insulting, you are a nigger. Niger, call it, flag it however you like. You are a nigger. And I'll tell you what it means. So that the enormity of your, should I say, ignorance, let me not say stupidity, can be driven home. Listen, I come to Wikipedia. In the, this, we ask about Niger, um, so Wikipedia knows that there is nothing called Niger, it is nigger. Forget all the semantics, it's nigger. We asked, um, uh, according to Professor, he is emeritus actually, he sent me this very link, and I want to read it for you, what Niger means. Let me call it Niger, or Nigeria, what it means. In the English language, this is, this is according to Wikipedia, the word Niger, or nigger, is an ethnic slur. Ethnic slur, which means <laughs> it is used as insinuation or allegations about members of a given ethnicity or to refer to them in a derogatory, pejorative, or otherwise insulting manner. Hey! So you say to my name, the is insulting you, yes? You are insulting yourself, not me. Now, listen again. What does the word nigger mean? It's an ethnic slur. It is a name used to refer to people in a derogatory manner, in an insulting manner, in a pejorative manner. So anytime you say, I, I'm a Nigerian, you're saying to the world, I'm a monkey, I'm a baboon, I'm a fool, I'm an idiot, I'm a damn darkness. But that is your name. No wonder they don't, when I speak, no wonder they don't want Nigeria to break up. No wonder! No wonder! And I kept thinking to myself, why is it that God in heaven keeps saying to me that Biafra is the light of Africa? I never knew until yesterday. That the reason why they always want you to maintain the name Nigeria is because you are darkness. You, darkness is fighting light, which is Biafra. So the only thing a white man can do is to name the, the, the British, they saw the light of God in us. And how do you cover light? Not darkness, you cover everywhere. So do it. And that's what they did. So instead of them to say, oh, you are the children of light, you are doing very well, they said, no, we will now give you a very good name. Darkness. And once you accepted that name, that your name is Darkness, Darkness came into our essence, our being, and our spirit. That is why we are poor today. That is why there is nothing you can do in Nigeria and it will progress. There is, it doesn't matter how many times you change government. It doesn't matter if anybody you bring, these two will be with you. Never ever change. Do you know why? Because of your name. I asked you before. Will you name your child darkness? Will you name your child nigger? It's a simple question. If you cannot name your child nigger, why have you allowed a little white girl to call all of you nigger forever and ever? And you say you're proud of it. Now you understand, don't you? Now you understand, don't you? This is why you are being killed. Because of this name, because of this darkness. That is why things are happening in the zoo and nobody cares to know about it. And after tonight, are you still going to call yourself uh, a Niger Delta? Or a Niger Delta? Niger Delta? Or a Nigerian? Or from Niger State? Niger State is Niger State. And you want something good to come out of it? Hey! It is actually Spanish for Negro. And the descendants of the Latin adjective nigger. That's what it is. Which means <laughs> darkness. <laughs> Black. Darkness. Evil. 
it was used to derogate really, especially the USA. It's a racist insult. A racist insult. That is your name as a people. And you are telling me that you are ever, ever going to progress from it. I doubt that very much. That is why your name follows you everywhere you go to. Follows you all the time. Who can give a birth to a child and name the child absorbity? Can you do that? Can you name your daughter, your beautiful child, absorbity? But that's what you're answering as a Nigerian. A racist slur. You have no shame. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I said I'm not going to start anyone today. Uh, when we say some of these things, now you can appreciate where we're coming from. Now you can. Please, what we are doing here is to free people from their mental slavery. Because we're not going to take people who cannot reason very well into Biafra land. We cannot take you. There's no need. We need people who can reason. And please um, try and put it up. Mental slavery is what we are trying to treat here. The white folks in the USA and before that Europe did not destroy the fabric of the black man with overwhelming force of brutality. Although we know we worked in the USA for 250 years without pay. We gave America 250 years of free labor. In fact, they even made game. After working for them for free, they still sell us and make profit on top of it. Do you know how the white man achieved the subjugation of a black man? Because they succeeded in diverting our attention away from the thought process that will lead us to intelligence. Intelligence is the key. And what leads you to intelligence is the ability to reason. You must be able to reason properly. That is the pain I'm going through every day. How can black people reason? How can they reason beyond their useless, I'm sorry, sentiment? How can you be less sentimental? and more critical and discerning. Once we achieve that, we have unlocked, unlocked the door. Everybody will be free. We are not an intelligent people. Intelligent people will not call themselves nigger, an insulting word. You cannot do that to yourself. And then expect something good to come out of it. Absolutely not. In 1884 to 1885, they held a conference in Berlin. Please post it. Just the caption. The meeting that formalized colonization. And anybody who accepts colonization means you have no shame. And I, I love what the author of this piece did. He said, just like livestock. You know the way you have poultry? You sometimes you go to poultry, you divide the layers and the, what they call it, there is uh, the layers and the, and the, hi, can we handle the uh, You have, in a poultry, you have layers and you have, um, I don't know what the other one is called. Please. I don't have you, you. The way you go into your poultry farm and you separate the 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 ones that lay egg and the one you're going to sell for meat. That's how it is. That's what this offer said. Just like livestock in 1884 to 1885, Africans were shared among men who believed that the color of your skin determines you as a slave or a master. Nigger, 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 Nigerian. Nigeria, Nigeria, Niger, Niger, Niger Delta, Niger Delta, Niger State, Niger State, Niger River. Do you understand? The author said, just like livestock, they just went into the boat and said, hey, hey, come, uh, 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 on this man, in Germany, take, take four chicken there from, please, uh, who else come, take, come and take four boats, come and take them, it's now yours. That was how Congo became the personal property of King Leopold, the most evil man in modern history. Now do you understand it? That's how Britain uh, received their own share of the poultry, which is Nigeria. And people are fighting every day and dying every day to preserve something that was created to dehumanize you. That is the brain of the African man I want to get into. If we can understand this, we are all of us are free. We must proceed. There is a question I've been asking myself over and over again. Why is it that a black man is prepared to kill for and be killed for something a white man created to enslave him? Can somebody answer that question, please? 
we must defend Nigeria. Nigeria is the one, one Nigeria. Uh, and I kept wondering, why is it a meeting after meeting? Diplomatic meeting after the I heard the same thing. Uh, but don't you think you can do something and leave Nigeria as one? I don't know it was when they were trying to shield us away from the truth. That is why when you mention Piafra at the UN, they all get up and they run away. They know we represent the light. And the name Nigeria is darkness. They want darkness to cover Africa. Because Nigeria is the most populous nation in the whole world. The ones you hold Nigeria down with this idiocy. You have held every black man down. We cut it. Now you see why we are for Biafra. Not from a human standpoint. We go into the spirit and see things that mere mortals cannot see. Do you see why they beg you Nigeria should be one? One Nigeria. What can you do to keep Nigeria one? Why don't you answer Biafra inside Nigeria? Because there is need for that darkness to continue. Because your name is darkness. Your name is evil. Your name means you can never be enlightened. Your name has brought light. And as you have seen from our lectures on Sunday, even Quran says God is light. The Torah says God is light. The Christian is the same for this light. And somebody named you darkness. Is there anywhere in Spain they call Netherlands? No. Now you understand, don't you? This is the game they're playing. And they're saying, no, leave it as one night. Anybody that tells you, leave it as one Nigeria, you know that person, even in the spiritual realm, has been initiated. To find light. They are the true brain of Satan. That is why our Bastanjo will always be. Because our Bastanjo is the agent. I know him very well. He thinks I don't know, but I know him well. He's the agent. They want one major. Because they represent you. They represent darkness. Darkness. How can you tell me that you went to school and you want to name your child darkness? Nigga, a racist slow word. Something that is used to demean you. That is what you're answering with green white, green flag. And the 200 million people under eternal damnation and subjugation without knowing it. And you claim you have universities. Ordinary something, ordinary Google, don't get it. Ordinary Google, go and Google your name. And let the shame overcome you. Go and read the one from Wikipedia. Let your shame overwhelm you. How else do you want me to teach this? How else do you want me to teach this so you understand? So that the brain of a black man can open. How else do you want me to teach it? Your name is darkness. You did, a white, little white girl came out of, um, uh, should I say, her greatest convictions. She named you Nigeria. Niggas, and you accepted. And if they call you a nigger anywhere else outside Nigeria, you start complaining. But you're a nigger. Stop saying, I'm a nigger. Okay, hey, you, you're a nigger. It's better now. That's your name. I want to sound like um, one of these useless American rap artists. I don't like rap music. Some of them I don't like. It's a very useless genre doesn't add anything to your life. We must continue. Why must you defend something a white man created to enslave you? Some people say, I don't have respect nor regard for black people that I keep promoting white supremacy. And now, I am only highlighting your stupidity. Not promoting white... I, your name is nigger. How am I insulting you then? Is that not your name? That's a Nigerian. I'm not nigger. Is that, is that not the meaning? Is the little meaning of your name? It's nigger. How am I insulting you? You insult yourself, you start by insulting you. Nigeria was created, or Nigeria was created as part of the process of partition of Africa by Europeans for their own economic gains. Nigeria was not created because they love you. And it was created as an economic, uh, as a company. All of you that claim you want to maintain one Nigeria, you are maintaining a British company. Not a nation, not a country. You can lie to yourself because of the oil and gas coming from Biafra land. You can lie as much as you want. Your name is nigger. 
you were created to serve the victims, and you will serve them every present day of your life. All of your slaves. It is here. Is there anybody saying that colonialism was a good thing? Is, is that what you're saying? You know, you people say, oh, we must end colonialism, it's not good. You, you, you acknowledge that colonialism is not a good thing. But you're keeping all the vestiges of colonialism. You went to war because of it. Something a white man created. You are prepared to kill five million people because those people said we don't want this British company called Nigeria. Fellow black Africans who went to war killed their fellow Africans in order to preserve something that a little white girl created. Is there any idiocy higher than that one? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Ah, oh, they are these are the black people. <laughs> what was the outcome of colonialism, if not the creation of contractions like Nigeria? Now, if Nigeria, if you say that colonialism is bad, and Nigeria, you acknowledge that Nigeria is a product of colonialism. It therefore means that Nigeria is a bad product. I don't know if you follow what I'm saying. If the colonialism that gave birth to Nigeria is bad, it therefore means that that very product is flawed. If it's not bad, why did you campaign against colonialism? Why, I ask you? Somebody said, of course, uh, he banished you. <laughs> Omubi cannot insult anybody. <laughs> I promise I'm not <laughs> I won't insult anybody today. I'm not. I, will. I just want to lecture. As heaven has directed me to. I want to lecture. <laughs> okay, I'm not insulting anyone, please. <laughs> I'm not. It's simple common sense. Nigeria, the zoo, Nigeria is a product of a flawed, exploitative process. Therefore, Nigeria, Nigeria is bound to be exploitative and bad. Evil will always beget evil. That's what it is. Colonialism was bad. The product of colonialism are all these flag independent states in Africa, of which the most prominent is the zoo called Nigeria, Niger area. It means it is also bad. Some people have said, oh, you must focus on delivering the people from the zoo first before educating them. I totally disagree. I comprehensively disagree wholeheartedly because the mindset we use to enter into our new nation, Biafra, is going to be the sum total, the sum total of what we are likely to become from their name. Any region in the zoo, Nigeria, is why I call it the zoo, Niger area. Any people in the Niger area that fails to reorientate their people will end up being another Nigeria. Only worse this time. If we go into Biafra with the mentality of Nigeria, we are finished. The time now is four minutes past 8 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. That's how you know we are live and direct. Any other time, it will be different. Then you know it is you know, recorded, broadcast, the one they do with um, whoever is wearing the mask in Atorok, you know, recorded um, broadcast. <laughs> you have a president who is alive, but he cannot do a live program. <laughs> only in the zoo, only in Nigeria. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm, I said I won't insult anyone. Let's proceed. That is why I say that the, pro, the, the lectures we give you on Radio Biafra, <laughs> They are priceless. You can't buy them anywhere. If I start to charge for it, I don't think uh, uh, anybody can afford to pay me what is worth. So that we can enter into Biafra with a clear mind, a brain that can think and discern. We are preparing our reasoning faculties for Biafra. Africans, we are taught to fight colonialism but not to adequately identify and resist neo-colonialism. Azikiwe, Awolowo, Amadubele, they may have fought 
Uh, so they claimed, because you know, it was America after the Second World War that told Europe to get away from Africa. It's not what you did in Africa that stopped them. It was America saying, you know, enough of this rubbish. Get away from Africa and they all ran away. As it happened with this West Canal and Eden. If you don't know, let me tell you. If there was a time that Britain, after colonialism, ran back to the West Canal to then take it in Egypt. And the uh, American president, I think it was Truman, is it Roosevelt or Truman? I can't remember. You know, Roosevelt or Truman said to. To Eden, the British Prime Minister to talk, come and get away from Suez Canal. Walk on call. And the British withdrew. And they Camel Abdul Nasser, Suez Canal. And Egypt has it in today. Remember Suez Canal. Do you know the Suez Canal? S U E Z. S U E Z. The Suez Canal that cut down the journey. Because before, every ship from Europe traveling to India or traveling to the, to the, um, to the Gulf of Aden will have to pass through the Cape of Good Hope. Go around Africa and then go up again through the, through the Indian Ocean into the Arabian Gulf. But the Suez Canal made it possible. They control it, they open it, and the ships can pass and they charge for it. Britain wanted to go back and take it in the early 60s. Britain stormed it with paratroopers to take over Suez Canal from the then Egyptian leader, Kamel Abdel Nasser, who was assassinated by the Israelis. He took it. Do you know why he took it? One phone call from the U.S. president to Prime Minister. He told him to get, come on, get away. That the era of colonialism is gone. Get away from Africa. Britain came back in disgrace. Van ask or consult your history books. They know, we know anyway. We must proceed. And today, the reason why I want to play this very clip is to let the whole world know that everything I tell you is correct. You have all seen it. It went viral. You know about the soldier that he went uh, uh, and did a, a video. Whistle blowing is called to expose what is happening in the army. I told you that Burata is nowhere to be found. You know, when I say this, uh, he's a madman, don't trust him. Hey, look at what he said. He, do you know that there, there was somebody who said that um, the reason why I'm against the pastors is because corrupt pastors are must add. Is because I wanted them to believe in my conspiracy theory that Asarok is empty. This is a somebody who went to school. Now, you, don't, you didn't believe me before, but this is somebody who is fighting for the zoo. As a soldier, of course, misguided, misguided. A black man. He's fighting for the zoo. Let us hear, hear what he has to say about your beloved one, Nigeria. Anything I tell you, anybody who doubts anything I say, you know that person is an agent of Lucifer. I cannot mislead our people. The God that sent me to preach this gospel, can we even allow it? That is what I think is correct. This is another justification. Should I say vindication of what I've been telling you about this? This is an army that wants to fight us. I may say it's Britain that will fight for them, not them. For now, on the earth cannot win any war. They always depend on other. Now that the child said they won't help him again, Cameroon said they're not helping you again, uh, and Nigeria Republic. Have you seen that Nigerian army is all, is all over the place? They cannot win a war. But if you see the way, if you hear the making noise, eh, you wonder. The Vietnam War was won and lost. It was a war between British colonialism and Biafra. That's all. Nothing to do with the Zulu army or Bassan Jambalia rubbish. Nonsense. On top of that, they, 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 they blockaded us air, land, and sea. No weaponry, no food, no nothing. We held out against Russia, Egypt, Britain for three years. This army cannot fight. And before heaven and Nigerian army, they are useless. They cannot fight. They can never fight. Let them not provoke us. Of course, uh, this is 2020 now. Uh, we don't have fight. No. Let us hear him what he has to say. Listen. Let me know. I'm reading this is because Listen. of the command that I'm under, which, which is the chief of army staff. Chief of army staff, yes. Lieutenant General Tukulusuf Buratai. Yes. Buratai. As I'm making this video, uh -huh. I want to let you know that I'm highly disappointed in the command. Yes. Buratai is this video. A coward. He's a coward. A traitor and a betrayer to the Nigeria as well. Are you listening? I don't care what you do. You may treat you as God. 
you may try to kill me, you may try to do this, but I'm not in another business with you because you are no more lawyer. You cannot end my loyalty with what you are doing. Mm-hmm. You cannot end my loyalty. Is that your officer? The CDS. She <laughs> <is constant. laughs> I am highly disappointed in you. Chief of Defense Staff, this is the budget. Disappointed in you mm-hmm. in the sense that you are the Chief of Defense Staff. Uh-huh. The Army, mm-hmm. Navy, the Air Force yes. is under you. Under you, yes. You are the piloter of this to bring out the structure of the military. Uh-huh. You are filled. To the extent you are even collecting command from Chikoas. Are you listening? Do you, do, do you people now listen to me? Do you not listen to me at all? What if some of you have seen this video, you didn't analyze it very well, or you didn't actually understand what he's talking about? He is saying, no, let me just, I just want to go, I don't want to go too far, I want to go to the house in the open. I want to say, who is the, I'm just googling it please, who is the uh, um, chief of uh, defense staff in Nigeria? The chief of defense staff? Uh, in Nigeria. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll explain to you what is going on properly. <laughs> okay, to go for He's a Yoruba man. <laughs> and now, his name is General Abayomi Gabriel Olomi Taki. Yoruba man. Taking orders from a Fulani man. That she be taking orders from him. He is the chief of the. So I said, you know, so, you know, some people they go through the, they see this video, some of these things. They don't read. People don't read meaning into it. Listen, listen. They don't read meaning into it. After this video, let's go back a little bit. Reality. Listen. I know. After this video, you may come. You want no, to no, no, no. I want to go back a little bit. To make the truth says that you are the chief of defense staff. Chief of defense staff. The army, the navy, the air force, the army. Orlando Stacking is chief of defense staff. So he's in charge of army, in charge of navy, in charge of air force. That is the meaning of chief of defense staff. He got all the other service chiefs report to him. Now listen. This is when I said this, they said you hate Europe. I don't hate Europe, but you your cowardice is what is, is, is affecting my soul. It's affecting my brain. You know, but you do this time and time and time again. You are higher than somebody who is a ginger weed. Why must you? If I say this, they say it's propaganda. No, they carry with this propaganda. This is from an army officer. They have arrested him today. He's an army officer. He is saying it. What this man is telling you is that the Yoruba officers serving in the army that they are cowards. That's what he's telling you. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. Not me. If not, why would somebody who is the chief of defense, entire defense structure, General Abayomi Gabriel, or Ronnie Takin, why would you report to Buratai who should be reporting to you? Hey! Do you see why we need these lectures? Do you see why it is important? Because in Biafra land, it will never be like this. You must obey the general. You see what Fulanis have done to people. Everything is upside down. The constitution upside down. The legal system upside down. Everything is upside down. Including the reporting, the chain of command in the army. Or should I say the defense sector. That should be sacrosanct. Because that is why they, they don't want to put a Japan there. They know the government will say no report to me. They put the Obama. Oh yes, remember. And when I say it, the, the Yorubans will get upset. Don't be upset. I'm telling you, you need to change. That, that is what he's saying. Let me see to him again, please. This is so that. I am. Listen. You are the piloter of this to bring out the structure of the military. Mm-hmm. You are filled. To the extent you are even collecting command from Chikowas. You know who is Chikowas? Chief of Army Staff. You, you, this young man is saying that I buy your meat, Gabriel, and one second, you have failed. Now, these are the people you expect to defend you against Boko Haram, against ISIS in West Africa, against Al Qaeda in the Maghreb, against uh, 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 Ansuri, against Indonesia. Do you see that the Eurobars and Nigerian I army mean, that they are a waste of space? They just have rank for nothing. 
waste of space. Somebody that that good at all when he was alive should be reporting to you. If you want to put it on the can you bring something? No wonder they are arming all the bandits and he cannot say anything. This is from a Nigerian soldier. <laughs> now you understand why we say the things we say and why we say them the way we say them. Do you now understand it? When I say they say you 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 are let me kill be God. Yoruba should stop being cowardly. There are brave men there. Fajiji was a Yoruba man, stood beside the Rosie and fought. There are some Yoruba men that fought in the African army. So I know there are brave, brave, most people make it. There are brave, brave, where are you people? Why do you allow people like this man or Ronnie Cassin or whatever he's called to bring this honor to you? People? Why? Reporting to somebody who should, he's a general. This one is a lieutenant general. A general is a lieutenant general, isn't it? Unbelievable. 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 Hey! Yoruba, why are you like this? Why? Why are you Why can't you be brave for once? Be brave. Call a spade a spade. Be brave. Be brave. Hey! Hey! Is it is it is it that you are afraid of the full and what is it? Is it only I thought it's only what I said people lost. Is it, it was what type of damage did the full and do to you before that? You are afraid. Even the friend that you are higher than in rank, you are terrified of him. Why? You are about why? No wonder when the chief of defense staff is a Yoruba man, he's scared he cannot do anything, and chief of army staff is that is dead. He died, he contracted <laughs> Corona or Omwana. He's dead. That is why today 240 persons were killed. Sorry, within six days. 240 persons killed by Boko Haram bandits within six days in northern Nigeria, according to a group. Abdul Aziz to the man. You see, I don't know what is it, what is CNG? What is the name of CNG? Coalition of Northern Groups in a statement today said. Nigerians have steadily lost confidence in the ability of the authorities to revive the uncertainties arising from the cyclical violence which has continued to ravage the country. Who are the who are carrying out the violence? <laughs> Janjaweed. Who is in charge of the army? Janjaweed. Also, Jan in fact, the the the, the robots they have <laughs> are just oh yes member. <laughs> they report to their juniors. And you don't, you, you think this army can win any war? <laughs> oh dear. So we're only a few months away. <laughs> uh, we shall see. Have you seen your Zoom? 240 people dead, slaughtered. People are dying every place. Let me tell you from my house in Nigeria. A Nigerian, so to speak. A Nigerian cannot reason. Your average Nigerian cannot reason. People from this darkness, they cannot see. They are not enlightened. They are not. There is every sign that things are not okay. You don't have a head of state. You don't have a president. You don't have any vice. There is no chief of army staff. Who is the main man? The chief of defense staff is afraid. What sort of country is that? Are you people all blind? You cannot see? Or you cannot reason? How can you have a president that such rubbish is happening? How can you represent that demolishing your uh, your embassy in, in Ghana? You have a president and they're kicking you out in Congo. What sort of people are you? Why can't you reason, for goodness sake? Why? Because you're afraid. Now you've got that in the can. If he gets his Biafra, we won't get uh, oil and gas. So all the all the Yoruba billionaires will go bankrupt overnight. Because they depend on oil, isn't it? And gas. To make their billions. That's what it's. Oh, oh, we will support Niger Delta. The country is close to Niger Delta. <laughs> they think they are that. We know their game. As if you love uh, the so called Niger Delta. Do you? Do you? Oh, no, so I like Niger. I 
and the and the and and the uh, with the oil companies that can be allocating, uh, sharing all the money, oil blocks, everything. You think without, you think you are stupid without know? So you love Niger Delta and the headquarters of every petroleum company is in Lagos. Every personnel that they bring in, the, even at the so-called petroleum institute, is only other people who are there, not the Afghans are there. Yeah, you love Niger Delta. <laughs> the thing that is in the olden days, before the Afghans the Afra, now we have come. And that deal is on the ground. All that year, year lies. You know, I can see that now mobilizing their, their, their agents, the, the Sabo in our midst, to be talking, oh, what are you doing? You're there, and I'm the camera, I feel the everywhere, and I'm the camera, I feel What are you doing? You see the Sabo, Sabo will come out and make one video. That's how you know them. They talk rubbish, and they disappear. They talk nonsense, and they disappear. My happiness is that their audience are no longer existent. They know they have disappeared. Now our people are wiser. Now we know the truth. <laughs> they think we are foolish. Let us now look at another thing which we have escaped. Some people tell us that I forgot about that rock. No, I'm going into it tonight. That's a rock. Yes, we are going there now. <laughs> we are going there because way, there is no profit there. This woman has called out Taisha many times. Where are Nigerian men? She did the video. Lied. That was the day that. Eh, Believe you me, before God, that was the day I thought to myself that I, I knelt and I prayed to God and I said, God, I, I, uh, black people, where did you get them from? I, I was asking God, well, are you sure the, uh, you didn't create us by mistake? Are you sure? I shut him out, not once, not twice, to say to everybody, there are a, a group of people, Kabal, they have hijacked my government, my husband's, uh, uh, uh government. Everybody kept their tongue like, hey, 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 my mom said, they took her, 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 her husband's government as a joke. She was crying for help. That time, Abakir had the upper hand. They humiliated her, not once, not twice. Now Abakir is dead, and she's the one in charge. The other day they were trying to remind her that she's a woman, that she shouldn't be in charge. But now I'm happy that all her privileges have been returned to her. And I keep asking people, those that knew the old Buhari, are you telling me that if you're in your house and that you're upstairs and there's a gunshot and your wife is being humiliated, you will just sit there and do nothing? Let me tell you the trick they're bringing me. They're saying, oh, maybe he's incapacitated. Hey, let's go to the victory cover. He's not feeling well. He's like, you see how people talk because you're in a zoo. You're in darkness. Nigeria. You cannot see the truth. You cannot see the truth. You cannot. Let me tell you what is going on. There is a very simple experiment and it is done work before because I'm going to run a live AM interactive program on Friday. Just phoning. I won't do anything. People just be phoning me. I'll be answering questions on Friday mornings. I'll be doing that now. Let me ask you to do this homework for me, please. Do you know that if you go to Asorok all the time, they will say to you, oh, the governor of Bruno State came to visit. Is that correct? Oh, the Oba of Benin came to visit. Oh, the Arakan of Oyo came to visit. And, oh, maybe even Osubaja came to see him. Or boss Mustafa. Or Ibrahim Gambali. Yes. Let me tell you definitively why there is nobody there. Daddy, forget all these boys wearing masks, all these uh, uh, Aisha boyfriends. Rubbish. Do you know the funniest thing? None of these people, none of the, in all these people that went to inside Aso Villa, whatever they call it, you can never hear the person they went to visit speak on camera. What usually happens is that after they say, oh, uh, 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 Mr. Barabu's man went into Asa to see Mr. President and I saw him and they discussed. They, they talked about agriculture, they talked about cow, they talked about uh, how many cows in the uh, Dawra farm. You, do you hear the person that went to visit speak? After speaking, the next thing you hear is outside giving an interview. You will never hear from the so called president. I said, 
check every video this year of the so-called visitors to Asrock. See if there is the one clip. Even when the what's his name, the Africa Development Bank, the guy that stole money, the European man that stole money at the Africa Development Bank. I've forgotten his name, the ATB chairman. He went to see him. They were doing a uh, 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 chop knuckle or uh, chop elbow. They are doing a uh, elbow pose. You saw the man, the young man, because I'm sure I'm older than him. You saw him after speaking. He left. The person he was doing chop elbow with never spoke a word. And you have 200 million people looking on seriously as if everyone is a fool. You know, the reason why you have brain is to think. The reason why you put food in your mouth instead of your backside is because you have brain. Your brain is telling you your mouth is where you put food in. It's simple. It's the, when you go to see somebody, you don't hear from the person. They talk at the wife inside the villa. Nobody said a word. <laughs> they are killing the soldiers. He didn't say anything. Burakai is dead. He never said anything. Osuna oh, is missing, presumably dead. Uh, you don't hear. And all of you, you got together. And uh, out of all these, should I say, abundant evidence, you still decided in your brains to say there is a Buhari inside us all. Now you can now see the reason why maybe that was what Flora saw so in you people. That led her to say, to name you darkness, nigger. Do you see? They say somebody's, I'm holding a the name you bear will follow you always. You answer darkness. And darkness has descended on you. Not just metaphorically, but literally. It is there with you, that's why you cannot see. So it's not that you know who of that time told you, uh, ruling class, don't know, they know. They know all the things. But as they sit down, they agonize. If we open up and say what we know, oh, that's the land they can't afford. If they saw this, he will take all the, all the credit for it. The world will know it's the right. That is all the envy, envy. A black man's envy is holding them. And jealousy. They know Asherok is empty. The whole place is now is on autopilot. It is in the interest of the new colonialists to keep Nigeria one because they love the name darkness. As long as it stops Jaffa from coming, that they are okay with it. And uh, for the Tulubu camp, all they want to do is to get to 2023. And then they'll start eating and having fun. That's all. These are black people. That is why Africa is poor. The way we reason, the level of evil in us is why we are down. We have failed to reason. And why is that? When the woman is saying, my husband, come and help me from, uh, help me from uh, those who have hijacked my husband's government. Help me. You said her husband, go back to your husband, your husband is there. It's just like a woman who has been raped, escaped the rapist, ran to you on the road and said, please sir, help me, I've been raped, I've been raped. He said, no, no, come and go back, you've not been raped. That is what Nigerians are doing to Aisha. She's lamenting every day, trying to send code and signal, my husband is no longer here. And I'm, I keep asking people, as a man, you that is defending the indefensible, you are living in Abuja, Lake of Senugu, you go out and name it, are you telling me in your own house? Somebody can be insulting your wife in your own house, and you'll be there, and you keep quiet? I don't know the, the God that made me Nigerians. I, I don't know. Maybe it's that name, that nigger you're answering. It's blocked up your brains. Embassy destroyed. Not a word. Not one word from somebody who is a place. Not one. Hey! You don't know that the destruction of an embassy is like an invasion. They left it to the to, uh, to, uh, uh, Senate President and the Speaker of the House. And you're telling. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand anything. I don't want to insult anyone today, to be honest. Because I'm, I'm very, very upset. I, I'm very, very upset. Now, listen. If you come home and somebody is beating your mother, or if you are abroad and you hear that your mother was kicked out of your house, who would you ask for first? 
No, you, where you are now, let's say you are in Russia or you are in Uzbekistan, you are in Vietnam, you are in China, you are in Japan, you are in USA. Your mom, your father is alive, allegedly. Your mother is alive, allegedly. Two of them are living together, maybe uh, somewhere in Ashoka, in Abuja. And you got a phone call. Oh, that there's a gun shop in your house so that people are stopping your mother in your house. Who would you call first? A simple question. Who would you call first? You will call your father and say, Papa, or oh, 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 dad, what are you doing? Are you there and this is happening? Common sense. What is wrong with black people? Common sense. Common sense. There is nobody here. The husband is dead. That is why they're insulting her. Can't you people read it for what? Hey. My good. Black people. Black people. You will ask for your father first. Now, why do you have... Somebody with a very compelling piece. I'll get his name later. But I'll use it tonight for this very program. That is something somebody wrote. He called it the silence in Asarok. Not from me, please. You know, I don't plagiarize. When I read from somebody, I say it's from somebody else. This is from somebody. Because I'm learned, I know what it means to produce an academic work. It's not easy. So somebody cannot spend their time researching and producing a work. You just copy it verbatim without giving them credit. That is stealing. Let me see if I can find his name before I can even proceed. Because it is very, very important that I can... He wrote a very... This is very, very compelling. I tell you that. His name is Dr. Sipo Mendy. Achibon. He's a lawyer. Dr. Asuko Mendy. Achibon wrote this. Very, very brilliant. He, he, he wrote it in such a way that people can... You know that because uh, black people don't reason very well. We know, that is the truth. We don't reason very well. So he had to try and break this down... So that anybody reading it will be able to, maybe at the end of it, you know, put one on one together and get you. Because we have failed to reason very well. Now listen, he, he entitled it the silence in Asorok. Something is not right, he said. People are no longer afraid of President Buhari, who was a dictator. His wife is not afraid or respectful of him anymore, which is on, is, these are my own words now, on Islamic. You cannot... It is all Islamic for a wife not to respect the husband, even if she is being abused or battered. That is something you must know. That is something you must know. <laughs> How unbelievable. Now listen. People are no longer afraid of the president. Anybody can do anything and say anything and get away with it. She is fighting her own staff. Fighting the staff of the people, people they claim is her husband, and they are fighting back. People are insulting her without fear of the husband. A young boy insulting the first lady. A first lady that allegedly the husband is alive. Are you people kidding me? Yes, he wrote, yes, silence. Nobody's saying anything. Maybe if he forgot to say that IPOB is saying something. You know how this do works. They don't like giving us credit. But we will be okay with it. Strange to have, listen, he said, strange to have gunshots in the seat of federal governors. Presidency is not a location for shooting target practice. A trained officer of the law discharges his weapons in trying to impose the will of Ice Chabuhari on another man who simply disregarded her. Yet, silence. <laughs> Fight in APC. Or Patrick is frozen out. Chair, chairman from everywhere, they have about 10 factions now. Chairman springing out from every cave like mushrooms. Or somebody beating like small boy. Removed. Katakata everywhere. Or Patrick goes to meet Buhari. But diverted to the chief of staff. But he went to see Buhari, oh, never saw him. Or Patrick is not a staff to Buhari. Or Bateki leaves PDP, sorry, he leaves APC to join PDP, but of course two of them are the same thing, because you can change and you can chop and change as you like. Yes, there is silence. There is fight in APC. More killings by Boko Haram. Kassina said the role of the so-called Buhari, who is alive, bro. remember how foolish we are. If Buhari is to be alive, why is Kassina still on fire? Protests erupting everywhere. 
killing of military officer and policeman by Boko Haram, bandits taking over the north, kidnapping and killing people. Yes, silence. You have service chiefs who are staying. They have stayed way beyond their tenure. Despite being ineffective, they are still in office because nobody to sack them. There is no head of state. They all know the truth. If you call them, they'll tell you, <laughs> don't allow me to talk. Oh. They say, okay, carry on, carry on, carry on. That's what I'm doing. And there are 200 million people there with your professors, with your learned men, with your academics, with your public. Hey! <laughs> Damnable biological republic. You people are damned. Damned, I'm telling you, you are damned. Your ignorance is astonishing. Astonishing, I'm telling you. Frightening. Something is wrong in our rock. He writes, I don't subscribe to conspiracy theories. But is Aisha hiding something from Nigerians? When he said it is conspiracy theory, both those who can spell conspiracy and those who can spell hey, conspiracy theory, then bring him out to speak. Where is the Shibajo? Where is that the, that ordinary secretary to government, the boss Mustafa, is the one giving directive and unelected? You, I don't, I want to stop complaining honestly because people are giving these zoo people that are giving me that there is a level of stupidity you will see. If people that you begin to wonder that they, they cannot be human beings, they can never be. They can never be. Honestly speaking, they can never be. Something is wrong in actual rock. Something is off. I know for a fact that no man on earth can insult a Nigerian man's wife and live to boast about it. Talkless of being employed by him. Who born you? But it happened in actual rock. Actual rock is empty. You know, they're afraid of uh, IPOB and Nam the Khan, that's all. They're afraid. If you announce it now that the man is dead, Nam the Khan will use it to, to destroy what is left of the zoo. You know, mm -hmm. we don't want it. Let's keep hiding. Please, the Tribune will help us. Let's report the newspaper, uh, Tribune, uh, National Newspaper, uh, Channel Television, every European newspaper. Please, help us. So we are going to give it to, to Jacobin. Help us to cover this fraud. Yoruba as a nation is covering up fraud in broad daylight. Fraud in broad daylight. An ordinary, this writer is asking you, Dr. Siko is asking you, an ordinary man, let's say you, even if you traveled abroad and so you hear on the phone somebody came to your, your house insulting your wife, your, your, your employee, somebody you employed is insulting your wife, what are you going to do? Eh? What are you going to do? They can only burn our markets. That's what they can do. Even in Kotunu, they are burning our markets in Kotunu. I'll get to that later. The man is saying, <laughs> everywhere there is silence. Silence everywhere. He said, my hope for Nigeria is beginning to sag. <laughs> for, for, for Nigeria. Nigeria area is beginning to sag. We must not let Nigeria pay a typical black <laughs> educated man. You know that like uh, an accountant that after doing all the calculations they mess up the total. Very typical. He's a doctor. Dr. Asupo Mendy is a, a lawyer. He says <laughs> we must not let what a white man builds to fail. That is, that sums up the brain of a black man. <laughs> you know when communism ended? They tore down every statue, every roadblock, everything. But it's only in Africa that a white man preserved all the, should I say, all the vestiges of colonialism. Only blacks can do that. No other race can. He's a lawyer, PhD perhaps. After writing this brilliant piece, he said, in a country where Meyeti Yala is a stakeholder in the government, but the fourth largest and most deadliest terrorist group in the world. He is saying, we must not let Nigeria fail. Do you know why? Because he lives in Abuja. <laughs> that is how blacks reason. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but this view is gone. I'm telling you the truth. That is Nigeria. They know it has collapsed. They know it very well. They are just waiting for me to make a move. That's why this view is gone. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we are going to get one soon. That, that's all they are waiting for. Let's let them and they can't make that move. That will collapse the zoo. <laughs> oh dear. Zoo is finished. It's finished. <laughs> that is how are you going? I I I I said to them, you can walk up to any Nigerian ambassador now, to any Nigerian embassy, you can set it on fire. Nothing will happen to you. Because Nigeria doesn't exist anymore. Do you know where they're hiding? Do you know where you can now? You do you know where you can go? All of you that are holding your passport, they don't need you can go to the next Nigerian embassy and beat up their staff now and you go free. Do you know why? Because once you're taken to court, you will name the Nigerian president as a witness. And he will not come. Nobody will represent him. <laughs> why do you think they put us down the embassy? They know there's no president. It's just people keep deceiving themselves every day. They keep deceiving themselves. They know there is nobody there. They know Buhari is dead. When they started Arabia, Abba tries to go over and die. And then any fool and man, any, any common, not just from anybody from the Sharia state, once they name you the substantive president will die. That's why Osman ran away. I don't, I don't know if they found him in Banana Island and killed him. I don't know. Have you heard from him? Maybe tomorrow you see Punch Mr. Eh, oh, uh, Tiba no commission said, turn that money. Did you see with your two eyes? Who has seen Buhari with his two eyes? A president that cannot give live interview. A president who cannot appear live on TV. A president whose wife is being, nobody's wife, even if you in your home, will you allow people to insult your wife like that? That's in this too, eh? Everything is okay. <laughs> this is why I call Nigeria is it's not an insult. I'm even elevating you. <laughs> you are Nigerians, nigger, black, an insultive word, a pejorative word. That is your name, and you answer it with pride. Even those with PhD, Nigerians, all of you, niggers everywhere. I know people are listening all over the world, even those in America, they'll be cringing. Oh, but, but daddy, you're telling us nigger. Tell your child your name is nigger. You're from Nigeria. Tell your child in America, in Europe. We, uh, sorry, darling, our name is actually nigger, you know. And if I'm that white man that was beaten up by a black man in Minnesota for calling him a nigger, I will sue him. I will sue the black man. We'll go to court and he'll pay me damages. I will simply argue that how can he say, I told him uh, he looks like a Nigerian to me, Your Honor. And the Nigerian is nigger. I call him nigger. To, 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 to recognize him as a Nigerian, I call him a nigger. That's their name. The case will be dismissed and you'll be awarded compensation. Right now, today, because of Nigeria and the Nigerian Republic, anybody can call any black man nigger. And if I see a black man, I'll call, if I see them, I'll call them nigger. Let them touch me. I'll go and take them to court. And then the court, I will tell you. I need now telling me that to answer the name of my country is bad. The name of my country is nigger. And that's what I'm asking. And I saw him, he looked like a, a, a Nigerian, and I called him nigger. I called the other Niger. What's Niger? Niger is nigger. He calls us Niger. It's nigger. The whole nigger FM, Niger FM, which is nigger FM. In the zoo. They are playing with us. You don't know how intelligent we are. They say, they, they boast so much. They, I don't know, why won't I boast? I don't know, but I'm learning, why won't I boast? Why won't why, why I be boastful? I went to school. I studied and I read. And on top of that, God gave me common sense, which most of you lack, unfortunately. I'm not starting anyone, please, because if I say the way it is on my mind, <laughs> we won't live here today. There is a video I'm going to play for you to confirm that there is nobody in Asarok that Buhari is dead. Simple video for this Asarok. I'm only asking you to engage your brain cells. Ask your brain cells to be working. Pray now before I play this clip that your brain cells are working. Ask God in heaven, please, Chukokikabiyama, give me context now to listen to this clip. And reveal to me the truth. From this clip now you will know that there is nobody in Asarok. Everywhere is empty. Everywhere is empty. 
And this is what Yoruba. You see, my friend, I, I love most of them. My friend is doing a very good job. You know? Pai Adebanjo is doing a very good job. One or two of them, from the Akinto, is doing a very good job. But they are very few and far between. These are people with feet. These are learned men. Learned men and women in your own land. Learned. Can't you speak the truth for once, for goodness sake? We are now going to discuss the zoo, the zoo before the, the Nigerians. Nigger. Well, I'm about to discuss you before the. Mm -hmm. Let's back there. I'll come again. Mm -hmm. I'll come again. I'm not going to, to deviate from what I'm, I'm doing. I, I'm not going to deviate. In any way, shape, or form. I know they'll, they'll keep calling. They don't, they don't understand. They do not understand. They don't understand at all, at all, at all. I, I'm going to play this so that the world may know. That the zoo is finished. Listen very carefully, please. Listen. His Royal Majesty, mm -hmm. Monopa Nedo Okwa Polo Polo, yeah. the second yeah, well. suburb of Benin, mm -hmm. and the chairman of the Edo State Council of Traditional Rulers yes. and Chi. Mm -hmm. This people, they keep, they keep calling, I don't know who this people are. Arrived the forecourt of the Asura Presidential Villa at 2.45 p.m. Mm -hmm. The Oba and his team of monarchs they are received by the secretary to the government. The Oba of Benin went to go and see <laughs> the Phantom Buhari. Maybe they brought this guy kind of from Saudi Arabia. Please listen carefully. I'm not going to say anything. Listen carefully, please, until the end. Listen. ...of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, who ushered them into the council chambers. Shortly, they were joined by President Muhammadu Buhari. Speaking, the Benin monarch tasked the president to urgently wade into the crisis between APC national leader Adams Oshomole and the state governor Godwin Obaseki. Mr. President, we do state to pray for our God in condolence to our son of Mr. President when the president was about BDDC in the provision of power to electricity consumers in a do state. So, who accompanied the Oba to and Listen. The, the situation has worsened. Mm -hmm. When the president was about to speak, journalists we are told to go out as he would be responding off camera. After <laughs> hey, hey, zoo. <laughs> Zoological Republic. Have you heard it? They found out somebody wearing a mask. I can't boyfriend. When it was time for the so-called uh, which is I can't boyfriend wearing a mask, to respond to the Omonoba about Benin, they asked all the pressmen to leave the room. But when the Oba was speaking, the pressmen were there. When the Oba arrived with his um, uh, chiefs in council, Boss Mustafa, the secretary to the government, went to receive them, brought them into the chambers. And uh, somebody wearing Buhari mask came out, of course, Aisha's boyfriend, the, the latest one, uh, came out. And um, after the Bini monarch must have finished speaking, when it was time, the whole president of the people, when it was now time for the president to respond, to respond to the monarch, all the pressmen we are asked to leave the room. What other proof do you need that I'm right? That there is no Bukhari? <laughs> I, I love that bit. I want to hear it again, please. <laughs> do you know who, what, what? They don't know what type you they, don't, they have no idea who we are. Do they? I don't think they, they, they do. <laughs> Complete decimation of the zoo. Everybody with their hand in Operation Battle Dance will die. All of them they will die. Every major planner of Operation Python Dance that came to my house, that led to the death of my parents, my men died. They will all die. What I see, what is going to happen? Let us go back a little bit, please. <laughs> Just a tiny bit. <laughs> to get, because most, most zoo animals won't believe this. I want to prove to you that there is no Buhari. This simple, even if, if it's just this case that I just played tonight, I think it's even enough. Listen, a jo this journalist is very, very brave. Very brave. <laughs> they didn't really remember to, to bribe him on time. Let us try again. They are told to go out as he would be rest. 
Listen. Yeah, the situation has worsened. Uh -huh. When the president was about to speak, journalists were told to go out as he would be responding off camera. As Have you heard of such somebody you voted for, you claim you voted for in a democracy? I see people, you don't see Trump every day, you don't see uh, Kofi, Zeta, Dada, no, Ghana, you don't see other presidents. Somebody came to see you. If you know you're going to be responding off camera, why did you invite the cameras in, in the first place? <laughs> Tomorrow, you see someone with a PhD or a professor of, of nuclear science, emeritus, living in, in a batter. He will come and write, hey, I want Nigeria. Hey, hey, I'm writing now to the president of Nigeria. Hey, president, you cannot respond to ordinary, <laughs> I wouldn't say ordinary because I respect the, the, the Bini monarchy. I do a lot. I love this tissue. So somebody who is just uh, respond, a, a monarch came, a first class monarch came to see the president, so called. Aisha brought out the lover. Because Aisha, changed, she, I think she changes men now. I think every nine, I'm not, I'm, I'm, we are still researching it. It's nine, nine months or so, I'm not sure. You should, to get the new one, representing a, something that is just evil in Islam. That's what she's practicing. And that's why, that's why little boys are insulting her. Have you seen it? Have you seen it now that there is no Buhari? Have you seen it? When it's time for the president to respond, uh, uh, Jonas will ask to leave. He will turn off camera. <laughs> now I want to say this to anybody. Ever since we discovered who is uh, have they ever made a live broadcast before? No. Capital, no. <laughs> when Osiba Job is still after all, can anybody find the video, please send it to Amaka to post. Uh, from I can find it, please. When Osiba Job went to after all, did you hear the person he went to see speak? No. When Buratai, they claim Buratai went there, of course, it's Photoshop. Buratai went there uh, uh, two weeks ago. And came out and spoke. Did you see who he met? Did that person speak? No. Then how can you say you have a president? How? <laughs> Nigeria. 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 <laughs> yes, yeah, so every place up there will they be right, you know, insecurity, details of meeting between Buratai and senior officers or personal commanders revealed. On a pages of me. it's just like um, an American people get wind. You never see them; they don't exist. But uh, if they, if they, if they can uh, rustle up maybe four thousand four hundred, they they find a journalist and then they still pass with uh, now with uh, you know that bag above my bar. You know those journalists one after one. They find them and give them four thousand four hundred uh, and ask them to bring them change. They write rubbish. They don't exist. They don't exist. But if you pay journalists, they write for you. They don't exist at all, at all, at all. Just on paper. You know that some journalists, some of the one at all, that some journalists who are in serious pain in the zoo. Some of them are very good in serious pain. They are looking for money to pay rent. And they tell them I have press to press release, so I want to. <laughs> They said I should tell you, boss myself, I said I should tell you to write about uh, uh, Buratai's meeting with your uh, officers. <laughs> no video. <laughs> no, if you are fighting a major war, there should be daily press briefing every day from the first of us. Every day. They said, All right, right, uh, I want you to write, say, uh, Buratai, uh, uh, don't attend me, you know. <laughs> oh, correct, sir. Uh, uh, you tell me that's your account number. I don't, I, I don't forget them. Democracy in the heart of darkness in Nigeria. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear me. We must preach this gospel. And what time is it now? Is approximately, so let's say, five minutes roughly. Five minutes to 9 p.m. I must preach. Please allow me to preach. Allow me to preach, please. The Baruta governor was there. Nobody heard Aisha's boyfriend speak. That is why I want this thing posted, please. No amount of evidence will ever convince an idiot, Mark Twain said. Post it, please. No amount of evidence will convince an idiot. What somebody is an idiot 
That person is an idiot for life. And on top of that, your name is darkness neither. Uh, uh, that's trouble now. No amount. No amount. I will talk with you today now. If that person is a human being, why did you ask the media? Because they know Nam the Kano IPOB we are watching. If, if he appears on camera, we fear it to pieces. We drop him away. If not for IPOB, they will be deceiving you with Photoshop. It is because of IPOB. That is why they cannot show any nonsense on television. They don't respect them. This is how powerful we are. We are, oh, 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 we are not in your league. We are not. We can never be in your league. If that little data you have oh, through is it Airtel or whatever, you can be you know, marking your rubbish as well with stopping rubbish that nobody wants to hear. Because some people don't want to talk about it. That's why I hate it. Is that correct? That's why I can't talk. You know, after the strain and the pressure of the work we do, sometimes we need a little bit of gossip here and there to to divert our attention, to play a little bit with one chunk of gossip. That's all. Nobody takes you seriously. Nobody. Now our people are informed. Now they know. As I'm speaking to you, the entire Igbo chat is listening live on FM. That's how formidable we are. <laughs> so your little video watched by uh, by six hundred people it makes no difference to us. We watch it out of fun to just see something different, to hear how somebody is gossiping. That's all. Me too. Sometimes I listen because uh, sometimes all this pressure you want a little bit of gossip to lighten things a little bit to make you laugh. No amount of evidence will convince an idiot. If I try to mind anybody rises up to say I am Niger Delta, you know they are working for the credit and they are ashamed of themselves because we have defeated them. We didn't, we didn't, did, did, did go to war. Only common sense and reason. Now they are on the run. Their, their masters have called them. Hey, what are you doing? Are you there? Hey, madam, you are there. They are, you are not going to Niger Delta. Did you hear what the Kami said? No, the Kami said nobody is, uh, is part of Niger Delta anymore. Hey, they were, oh, yeah, we are Niger Delta now. We are Niger Delta. Ask you looking for money from Janja with the Fulani. They think they are stupid. They think we are dumb. Niger Delta, my fruit. Darkness you are. And it shows in your brain. It shows in our environment in Southern Biafra. You can see it there very clearly. How dark. People are being poisoned. Are you aware of that? I'll leave it for you tonight so you will know what is going on there. That they will never tell you about. You think this is, uh, this is uh, 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 militancy, stomach militancy. We are here to fight for freedom. We are not militants. Freedom. And it's coming. And you will see it. If you are, if you are a foreign contractor and Nigerians are owing you money, now is the time to seize their embassy and demolish their buildings. If you are a contractor anywhere in the world, maybe you have printed passports for them because you, some of you don't know that your passports are printed abroad anyway. That the that was the contract they gave to the. You know what the zoo, what Nigeria did is to share all the all the huge contracts and give it to countries all over the world. Israel has a contract, defense contract. Russia has a contract, defense contract, and also um, this e bot which is this um, um, computer-generated um, attack system they have to attack IPOB and all that. They are paying very well for it. Britain gets oil for free. Everybody has something they're getting. Do you know the Irish Republic? That is where they print Nigerian passports. In Ireland. So there is no printing press in Nigeria that can print the booklet of your passport. And you're a giant of Africa. So we, when they share all these things, so that when when you now go to Ireland to talk about Biafra, that company that makes money from Nigeria will now lobby their government and say, oh, don't listen to IPOB, please, because if you do, we'll lose this multi-million dollar contract from Nigeria. That's how it works. They did it to me in Israel. And you know us now. Once you, what they what they can ever do is to try and stop us. We just continue. And we continued. Until we got to the people that we're looking for. That's the way it is. So anytime, that, that is why when I look at people, when they sit in the zoo, when somebody is maybe carrying a file or saying, they're talking about uh, Biafra, I look at them as mad people. If you're seriously asking or asking for Biafra, you will go to places where you will be rejected. And you'll be asking yourself, that why? Until somebody will tell you 
the contract that Nigeria gave to that country. And the big companies, just like in Germany, once we go to Germany to lobby, no, 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 we want one like Why? Because three men are there. Julius Becker is there. And this will be fund lawmakers. So German people that go to the Bundestag, people that go to German parliament are sponsored by Julius Becker, by Siemens. So if you bring them a thing that will divide like that, they will say no. Hey! They have cut me off again. They have cut me off. <laughs> I can't, that our brother has told me to always stay on point. I am not going to disappoint you today. I'm going to go back to what I was saying. They cut me off on my page. <laughs> they cut me off on my page. They cut me off on my page. I'm going back, of course. <laughs> Anytime I hit them hard, they cut me off. That's how I know. <laughs> I am going back to Siemens in Germany. Siemens and Julius Berger. They are the ones lobbying for this view. In each country, in each country, I can tell you who is doing what in each country. Are people listening at all on my page? I want I need confirmation on WhatsApp that people are on my page and that they are listening. Because I have gone back to my page. I don't know what is I can't see anybody there. I want confirmation, please. I need confirmation that my page is okay. I know the Facebook is under attack, that I know for sure. But I want to confirm that my page is okay. That my Facebook page is okay. I need confirmation, please. I need confirmation, please. That my page is okay. That's what I want to know, please. Is it okay? Are we back on my page? I need confirmation, please. I can't see anything. I need confirmation. Because I have tried to reconnect. But nothing seems to be happening. Nothing seems to be happening. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think it has reconnected because I cannot see it. I need confirmation, please, on WhatsApp, at least. If anybody is on my page, I need confirmation. I need confirmation. No, somebody is saying no. It is not, they have not allowed me to, the page is not, they have not allowed me to go back to my page. They have not allowed me to go back to my page. People are using... They have not allowed me to go back to my page. I am trying to return to my page. They have not allowed me to. They need to allow me to go back to my page. And I must do And I'll continue from Siemens. And also, was I'll continue from Siemens and, uh, and uh, Julius Berger. I'm not, I'm not going to let them get away with it. That's why they cut me off. Because they, they'll say, look at this, this nigger. Can you hear what that nigger is saying? If they just tell them to cut me off, as usual. Are they going to stop me? They can't stop me. They cannot stop me. We are going back to my page. Stay where you are. We have gone back to my page, and I believe it is live once again. We have gone back to my page. We have gone back. I have not seen anybody there. Yes, people are coming back, as usual. They are coming back. It's up now, I believe. The page is up now. Jocelyn is in UAE. Jocelyn is in UAE. She wrote that my page is not on. I am back on now. Mr. Amati, thank you very much. I am back on. We are Frankie, thank you very much. Kennedy Wongo, thank you very, very much. We are back on air. We are back on my page. Ubu Michael Okenna, the engineer, thank you very much. Uh, and also, um, one your mama is listening from USA. Julia said we are back. We are back. We are back. We are live and we are direct. And mankind is bearing us witness. I will go back to what I was saying before. I was rudely and unceremoniously interrupted by Facebook. We must go back. Yes, Carlos, everybody, of course. <laughs> Nobody should move to another platform. Go back to my page. Go back to Facebook. We must show them how resilient we are, how stubborn we are. We go back and we continue. We must continue. Because Tukoti Kabiam is in heaven, presiding over the, the whole Africa is vibrating. The whole of Africa is vibrating, I'm telling you. 
The whole of Africa is vibrating right now as we speak. People are back. I am going to return to what I was saying before the good interruption. Do you know what the zoo called Nigeria, do you know what they do? Every country of the world, they go there, they identify a company and they give them a contract. In a country of 200 million people, common passports that any printer can print, they gave that contract to an Irish company. Do you know why they did it? So that if we, we know all those Irish, um, conscientious Irish reverend, Catholic reverend fathers that always fight for Biafra. So if we go now and we are lobbying, the, let me tell you how it works. It's a secret, but I'm going to say it out so the whole world can hear it. That is why when somebody sits somewhere, you know, we're telling you they're fighting for Biafra, or working around with a file and diagram, telling you they are talking rubbish. Nonsense! They are, they are not fighting for Biafra. Because we know what we suffer on a daily basis. Each time you go to Ireland to go and lobby the Irish government to support Biafra, they will tell you, oh, there is a very valid case for Biafra. We can understand, you know, you fought a war and all the rest of it. But come back again. When you come back again, you will hear that um, it is in our interest to keep Nigeria as one. Because in the intervening period, the company that publishes or that prints your passport booklet, if you are a Jew animal, that is a, 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 a nigger from the Jew, that passport you're holding, go to your green passport now. It was not printed in Nigeria. That nigger territory, no. It was printed in the Irish Republic in Ireland. So with that, the company that prints it will make sure that the Afra will not be discussed. If you go to Germany, the same thing. No matter how hard you try to get to Angela Merkel and to get the German government to do what is right, the same way they supported um, Bosnia as a governor to break away from Yugoslavia, they will tell you no, because the Germans are benefiting through lucrative contracts from Siemens and also Julius Berger. Big, big money, big, huge money. And Julius Berger doesn't get paid cash. So you see the second major bridge that Julius Berger is building. Or so they claim they are building. All that money that was agreed will be given to Julius Berger in oil. Julius Berger doesn't take cash. They take oil instead. And let's say that River Niger is, let's say, for argument's sake, say 400 million barrels of oil was agreed. Because there is, you know what I told you, there is no meter at the pump head where they load oil. You never believe me until they and they confirmed it. Now, because there is no meter at the pump head, let me tell you why Julius Vega wants to be paid. Any smart company will tell Nigeria, the Niger zoo, in fact, Nigeria, to pay them with crude oil. Because there is no meter. Now, you have agreed to give Julius Bega 400 million barrels of oil for the construction of Second Niger Bridge. When Julius Bega goes there, they will take 200 million barrels. Do you know why? Because there is no meter. That is why they don't want Nigeria to break. No, but no sensible, corrupt government in the West by which we are all of them. Nobody wants... Italy is there with Egypt. Sorry, with um, Egypt, yes. France is there with Elf. America has Halliburton. They have um, Mobile. Very huge in Aquaibon. Are you following me? Britain is there, of course, they're there. They're just taking oil for free. Every country, every major country of the world has a contract. And those companies, when you go to lobby that country, those, com those companies will come out and say no. Tell their government, we are making money from these people. Why do you want Nigeria to break? And then God said to me, because I went to all these meetings and some of them accepted to do something and I do something now that Trump is there. And the others, they were saying, no, we want Nigeria to be one. God said, I'm going to break Nigeria through another means. Told me, I'll break it through another means. And today we are saying it. And now that is why they are panicking. And their friends are telling them, try and keep the death of Buhari a secret, please, until 2023. Please try. And that is why the European media is getting more money every day. Channels, television, 
Tinubu is making more money and more money than he can ever spend on all his life and his next 20 generations to keep it a secret so that the zoo won't better it's too late now and they're not too late that's what happened so I'm sure that our brother will be happy because I have gone back to where I stopped I've gone back to where I stopped I told people when I told them I want to achieve the world I go back to my old broadcast and leave the mask for me I told our people, the African people, that a time will come when your mothers will be raped, when your daughters will be abducted. I've said it many, many, over many years ago. Is it not happening today? Look at all, and please publish the pictures, all the dead bodies that litter our farms, our farm roads, our villages. People come to our land and they kill us. They come to our land and they kill us. Nobody's saying anything. They are waiting for IPOB. But this, do you know why they cannot do anything? It's guilty conscience. These are the people that brought Operation Python Dance. Those that killed our men. That led to the death of my parents. When I launched a security outfit, they came, all of them, what? Not knowing that they full on it about telling them to disassociate themselves from me and IPOB, we are planning something greater. They were planning to invade us. And I told Mordor that these people are coming. In his house in Enugu. I told Moto when I went to ADF meeting, I leave for Development Foundation. I told them that these people are coming. They are coming. They are coming. And today they have come. And out of shame, they don't know how to say, Oh, we are sorry for what we did. Please forgive us. Raise an army to defend our land because they know we have the men. Of course, we have them under one command. Raise all this army to stand and defend us. They are ashamed. That is why people are being killed. Everybody. I don't know what Why don't you do something? Why wait for them? No. All of you were there when the army came to my house to kill me because I spoke the truth. Because I told you to be prepared. You all kept quiet. All of you kept quiet. I lost 28 men, my cousin, my parents, and my dog, Jack. <clears throat> and you keep deceiving yourselves that uh, Buhari is there. But you know he is not. That is why I maintain that the zoo will implode this year. The zoo cannot pass this year. It will implode this year. If they, if they either do it peacefully, or they do it, you know, in peace. But this year must collapse this year. We can't allow this deal to go into 2021. It's impossible. Impossible. We must do it this year. Because men are dying. Look at your Publish those pictures and tell the people. Let them go to my page and see it. What is happening in your homes? All of you are now too ashamed. Because you don't want to speak about it. Has your Hanese spoken about the, the, the killings of our people? How about Pandev? No. How about your governors? Yes, those that plan to kill me. How about those reverend fathers that went to Nikelek Resort to plan my death and my assassination? Most of the bishops you have in Ibolan, they were there to collect money from Ikebre Madu to kill me. Nikelek Resort. Ask them. Ask at Bishop Tukuma. Anglican communion in Enugu, we are you there or not? Because when I push you, I will show you where to fall. If I mention an incident, I will give you names of people to ask. Ask Bishop Tukuman, we are you at the meeting where I was betrayed or not? Yes or no? Need to make result. <laughs> And they say we have no respect for elders. The elders that ganged up to kill me. And as a result of the trauma, my parents died. My men died. You want me to respect them? Allow me to come to your house and kill your father and your mother. Kill your friends and your relatives. And then see the way you react to me. These are the real killers of our people. Oh, her name and we can never forgive them. Never. Never forgive them. Never. Because they're evil. 
They are evil. Because of them, my people are like, can you imagine if they are still behind us then? To say what these people are doing is correct. It proves to us that you are sincere. They never, and I want them. They travel to Enugu that time. To Sultan went to Enugu to go and ask me, are you people here? What are you doing? Stop him now. They can't. You must stop him now. You must stop him now. But now that the foreigners are killing your people, has the Sultan come back to ask you how far? But you claim you're intelligent. I must preach this gospel. And people are answering uh, uh, Niger Delta. We are Niger Delta. That is a, a daily time publication. I'm sure all of you have it. I want you to go. This is for the saboteurs in the southern part of Biafra, in Ijon especially. I don't know what is wrong with Ijon. They always produce hardened, hardened saboteurs. Hardcore sabo, sabo, heavy saboteurs always come from Ijon. I don't know why. Maybe because uh, Upigo came from there as well. The light of Biafra is from there. Maybe Satan must be there. All you saboteurs from a John land, the sabo, this is for you. Daily time publication. Tuesday 25 of April 1967. The way your useless, useless, satanic Nigeria that came about. Created by one man. As a threat, should I say as a blackmail. If Biafra tries to break away, we will create Cross River, Ogoja and River State. So when you stand up and talk rubbish, nonsense about River State, rubbish was created by Goan. Not by God in heaven, but by a mother, a mass mother. Shame on all of you. I say shame on all of you. Talking rubbish, River State, Niger Delta. Shame on all of you. Something that go on created. You have no shame. You have no class. You have no dignity. Bunch of harlots everywhere. No dignity. No honor. You claim you went to school. They cannot reason very well. It was created to divide you. Here is the proof. Daily Times. April 25, 1967. Your useless Niger was created to divide us. You animals cannot be them. You can't. So you're making stupid video. Looking like a pig talking rubbish. Because your brains are empty. Your masters paying you money from the north. They press you. Oh, you are there. And I feel this waxing song. Tell something. Tell you not here. Fools everywhere. You, you're challenging people who are more intelligent than you. A lonely IPOB officer would demolish all of you in any debate. Not to talk of DOS. And then come to me. You will be demolished. They said any more than all these uh, people who they went to go and do a lawsuit. Out of shame. And I want to ask anybody who is this level. Why would any more go to go to go and institute a lawsuit with uh, Edwin Clark? Out of shame, your people are dying, and the only thing you can do is to file a court case asking for damages of um, their own share will be made around 17 billion naira. Not even dollars. You did not mention people who are dying, you did not mention the Yala terrorists killing people. What concerns you? Your main concern is money. Let's go to a court and ask for money. Because I don't see any greater strategy behind all this so called nonsense. There were other fools that said they wanted to go to court to fight for Biafra. It's been adjourned till today, it's an adjournment. So, how can you get justice? And Barack Obama went to court to go and challenge this um, dichotomy between the North and the South in terms of unity schools, cut off mark. The same cut off mark. The case is in court, oh, but the same cut off mark. If you score two from, from your bed, you will go to unity school. From Anambra, you have to score 138. But he's in court, though. He's in court, he went Where a Sharia man is the chief justice. Give you all the adjournment after adjournment until the kingdom come. Because you're guilty. More than you stand up to it because you are guilty. 
If you want to do activism, you come out on the street and lead a protest. Even Edwin Clark, I will come and, and will his wheelchair for him. Then we'll go and protest. That's what men do. Not going to which court are you going to? I'm not even going to bother reading the, the, the nonsensical lawsuit. They say they filed. People are jumping up and down in court. You know, was the case, was the case adjourned? Adjournment after adjournment? Can you get anything out of it? Are we not in court? He said we're not in court in the zoo. By virtue of this lawsuit, all the southern leaders and middle belt have publicly confirmed what I said from the onset that Nigeria runs a system of apartheid. That Niger territory called Nigeria runs a system of apartheid. That is the confirmation. Because you're going to court to enforce a constitutional provision, which means that people are in breach of the core principles of the constitution, which on its own is an impeachable offense, if you don't know. So rather than going to court and talking about this, you go to your senators and let them table the motion of impeachment. Is that apartheid? Don't you know that? Oh, sorry, this is black apartheid on a black man, so it doesn't count. If, it's, if it is white people, we'll be writing rubbish all over the world. Black against black, not a problem. If apartheid can be dismantled, why not this apartheid now in the zoo called Nigeria? Why can't this apartheid be dismantled? Why not, I ask? Why not? And I also want to please post that very um, newsworthy mis caption of, um, uh, or should I say, a cutout of what our leader said, our eternal leader, who is a dim, the general. He said, I believe Ahmadinejad cannot give political leadership to Ndibo. It can give social cultural leadership. There must be opening up to allow the evolution of a political organization. I'm quite disappointed with Ohaneze, and I say it openly, from Chukwana Kodbego to our general and our leader, the Biafran leader, Itano. Itano, I said. I don't want to make noise. When Biafra comes, uh, they will see what it means to honor him. I don't want to be making noise. <laughs> Uh, gang gets uh, two trips of sand, uh, uh, mold block with uh, uh, Gangote cement uh, rubbish. When we build a monument to him, the whole world will marvel. I don't want to make noise about it, but you will see. Our general, our uh, is useless, from the useless to the core. You're going to court. And uh, has anyone ever come out to say, I am angry, our people are dying? Look at the pictures on my wall, on my Facebook page. As a they ever come out to say, I am angry. You look good at the children. You don't see for the children. And then by another children. In Anambra, the body of the woman spread all over the place. They cannot stay because they are compromised. That's how you know a sabo. When it comes to talking about it, they can Hey! They jump out. They talk about that thing that affects everybody. No. No. Because once they say it, they are masters from the front. They can say to call them on the phone and ask them, Oh boy, what are you doing there? Don't you know that already? I must preach, please. <laughs> Thanks to Nihawo Odoro and Igbo governors who couldn't fight planet terrorism. Our people are now being picked up one after. In fact, they even it's because of them. Do you know that I those that came to my house, my parents' burial on the 14th of February, they're still in prison? You know why? Are you aware of that? Because some people that were in prison. Pay the bribe to the state prosecutor in Agia State. He was charging hundred hundred thousand each. And I said I won't pay him any money. These people came for burial. My parents' burial. Do you know they are still in prison till today? People that came for burial. And they were charged with terrorism for attending my parents' burial. I'm saying it because the day, the day our madness will start, you know you even you are gossipers by name, you love gossiping. You won't start from the beginning. You cut the story from halfway and start gossiping away your life. People come to my house for burial, my parents' burial. The state prosecutor in Abia State, in connivance with Abia State government, arrested people that came for burial in my house, locked them up until today. The state prosecutor, 
the DBB is asking for money. Because we made the mistake, somebody made the mistake, or an IPOB member or members made the mistake of paying money to them. Now they're asking for money. United States. The day I will give the order and the madness will start, all of you gossipers, all of you professional gossipers, you won't start the story from the beginning. You cut it from the middle. I'll give you their names of those that are holding. Who met Sunday is in prison in Omaha. In Afaruku, as a matter of fact. Kamali Pani is in prison. God time. Stanis Lanus is in prison. Donatu Sokeke is in prison. Chupo Dinaka Omena is in prison. Jonathan Oleta is in prison. Chidabere Waha is in prison. Ebele Tiamaka is in prison. Chime Dear Paul is in prison. Kingsley Osawale is in prison. He's actually an equivalent man. Kingsley Osawale. He came to Vincent. He's in prison. They came from my parents' burial. And they are in, they've been in prison since the 14th of February till now. No crime committed. Because they attended the burial of my parents, according to Hanes Dendi Ibo, according to Ibo governors, they are terrorists. But Fulani will come to our land and kill a woman and cut her body up into eight pieces. And they go scot free, they are not terrorists. Nobody talks about them. People that came to bury my parents, that the Nigerian army killed, are terrorists. Do you see why we are the way we are? And what is the name of the man that is holding them hostage? What is the name of this man that is holding our people hostage? I must find his name. I must give it to the whole world to know. That these are people, of, these are evil people, evil. They never prosecute for and is killing their people. Anywhere they see IPOB, they want to make money with IPOB by arrest. These are evil people. These are Biafra people in the police. In the police, we are asking the same in the same zoo that in the full army will the full army army officer and police will give guns to their people to go and kill their farm people. Those defending Biafra line will be arrested by Biafra policemen and women and locked up. I hope you are following. I hope all of you are following what is happening. Do you now understand the mess we are in? Do you now understand the mess we are in as a people? And they are holding them hostage until we pay money. Until we pay money. Not only then will they be released until we pay money. Do you know who is holding them hostage? I'm just saying it so people will know, the whole world will know that these are the evil people that we have. Such people cannot enter. This is the state that Fulani is killing on in the United States. In the United States. Okay, Zipa doesn't know anything about it. But people that came for burial going home, they're in prison. They're terrorists. I don't know, I, I, can't, I can't explain this. His name is V.O. Chubu. He is the Deputy Director of Ministry of Justice in Omaha. He's a child of Satan. And he will not go free. I swear before God and man, he will not go free. This type of human being should not see Biafra. He's an evil man. He's not an Abusa man, not Fulani, not Shuruba. These are evil men. Evil men using IPOB to extract money. Evil judges, evil magistrates using IPOB to make money. When Fulani are killing, nobody is talking. <sighs> Mr. Chuku. V.O. Chupu, the deputy director. There is um, one called Ekanem Glory. These are the police prosecutors. Ekanem Glory, you have not still fallen into arrest. It's IPOB fighting for your life that you are arresting. Do you see how if maybe this evil from Hanez and your skin and the governors has this is how evil that is why Fulan is making you you messing us up because of this type of brain we have. 
Hmm. I'm just saying it. So that when it happens, nobody will say, uh, we have no... You know, you know about people, they often to talk rubbish. You see them writing about title. I have seen, there's only so, one other uh, person from Abuja writing. Uh, before I used to ignore this, what I did is doing. But now I, I'm serious. He will never write about the killings of his people. And when did it start that we now hate ourselves so much that people are being killed by the full and nobody wants to talk? But you can write about IPOB and yap about IPOB and write about IPOB all you like. But never about the people who are dying at the hands of the full army. Very sad indeed. We must preach this very gospel. We need to preach it. And let me tell you something. This is, I am. I said I'm not going to insult anybody today, maybe even going forward, but I am distressed. If I ask you now, where do you have the greatest concentration of insecurity, what would you say? You say maybe in North East, in the North, Banditry, Boko Haram, Yet Yala, all this. But do you know that in Anambra, the police has taken over a community? This same police cannot take over a community in Bruno. They cannot take over a community in Yobe. They have not taken over a community in Adamawa. Why are all these things? I keep asking my okay, what what is wrong with our people? Why are these governors allowing these things to happen? I don't understand our people. Why must police come into Achara and the one in Okano to take over our land? Why? I ask. Why? Can somebody please tell me? What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us as a people? What is wrong with us? Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And this is what I was talking about this. We are busy suing a dead man. Buhari is dead and they know it. A case of being caught and judgment after judgment in the kingdom come. How, why are people lying to themselves? Why are people lying? Anyway, of course, remember Kenya Day Ocean, have you forgotten? The former finance minister that forged a certificate. Maybe that was where they got all this forgery from, these skills to forge. A country that is steeped in criminality, with some, some pastors that are insane, and pseudo intellectuals, elders who are there and evil is happening, they cannot speak. Our people are being killed. That IPOB is a terrorist organization. People come for burial and are going home to arrest them. If I give orders now, this this chupu, this this person in Abia, this prosecutor in Abia, if I give the order now, that his family should be dead, or if you start talking rubbish, oh now the family is a kidnapper, he has done it. Now he has kidnapped people from my house, going home. None of you have said a word, and he has the temerity to ask to be paid. This is why we don't give bribe to the zoo, DPP, or police. I have warned IPOB family members. I have warned them. If you are arrested, we don't give any bribe. We go to court and the case is dismissed. We don't give bribe to anybody. You see what this torture has cost? Now they want money from everybody. Because some people want to pay money to be released. If you go to Femi additional stage, Femi additional, the chief, the master forger, you will see all the people that came to Asarok. There is no video, no confirmation anybody was seen. Or seen talking to whoever they claimed they went to see in the name of, um, of uh, Buhari. All they care about is um is against Christianity. I have spent the Christian Association of Nigeria has no Twitter handle. All they care about is to take your tithe and your offering and then buy private jets. I said they have no up the whole time that their members are being slaughtered if they have common Twitter handle they don't have. Christian Association of Nigeria, no Twitter handle. I check and I couldn't see any. I am the one that tweet. And inform world leaders about what is happening in the zoo to Christians in the in in, 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 in zoo Nigeria. I am the one that does it. 
You don't give me your money, do you? Christians. You give it to your pastors and they buy private jets. They preach nonsense to you. They mess you up. The Fulanis will come and kill you. And they won't talk. All that bothers them is tight. And people think I cannot preach the truth. Who gave birth to that dog? I said I cannot. Who are you? you will, who are you? I cannot preach the truth. I'm not the kind of, Who told you that I won't preach the truth? I went to court and I called Buhari when he was alive. I called him a madman in his court. And it is you that cannot tell the truth. Who gave birth to you? We are the ones spending our money fighting for Christians who are persecuted in the zoo called Nigeria. I give the order and we spend this money huge every month fighting for you. Some of you ingrates. Some of you ungrateful Christians, I will say. Ungrateful, illiterate, badly educated. The amount of money I spend in a month Fighting for you. All of your daddy jewels have not spent it in a whole year. Do they fight for you? Where have they been before to discuss Christian persecution in Nigeria? It is IPOB that is doing it. IPOB, yes. For your information. Let me listen to what a man of God has to say about some of you who are ignorant. It is not me. I'm sure this is Tinder Bakari, is that correct? Yes. Listen to him. Listen to him. Listen. And then end up by my own private jet. Private jet? No, my own job is different. Tinder Bakari is saying that if you don't give him money to buy private jet, he said his own God is different. I did not hear people attacking him. Yoruba leader did not attack Tinder Bakari for saying this. But if it's a name, they can every idiot, every thumb, every, every cockroach be talking rubbish. Turn the back. Can't get in those who buy private jets. Are you not listening? Or have you gone deaf? And then end up buying my own private jet. No, my own job is different. It does not supply anybody's need for them to contribute it into the pocket of robbers and robbers. He called his fellow pastors robbers. Turn the back. He called Fake pastors, he called them robbers. God cannot give you money to give to a fake pastor. That's what Tunde Bakari is saying. I know some of you, you are black, you are from Africa, your brain is a bit funny. I'm not sure you can listen this thing through properly. You can, you won't hear what Tunde Bakari said, but you hear what Nnamdi can say. Yes, I'm telling you what Tunde Bakari said. Listen, please. And which the force of God, the people of our nation, are the endlessly and the desperate defeated. The hottest part of the head is himself, for preachers who take advantage of the people of God. Are you listening? The hottest part of hell is reserved for preachers who are on private jets, <laughs> taking advantage of the poor. Are you listening? This is from a pastor, a preacher of the word of God. Between the back of it. I'm sure that is him. I don't know where he's going. I don't know what he's saying. Or, but he's not saying it. I did not hear Yoruba attack him. If it's the Igbo people of the Africa, he will shoot in their mouth like popcorn. Break without control. A Yoruba pastor saying what most of you don't want to hear. You can't just get him. Just like the same way that the foreigners are killing us, none of you can talk. You're waiting for, for Nam the Kanu to give order, for IPB to fight back. And I'm here, and I won't give that order. I won't give it. I won't give the order. I will not. Tunde Bakari says, you can't hear. Has anyone can, have you seen headline? Tunde Bakari hates Christians. Tunde Bakari is against pastors. Tunde Bakari is Antichrist. Because it's Yoruba. I feel sorry for you people. That is fraud in, in, in the zoo. Hmm. EFCC, as I told you. <laughs> Magu is corrupt. Did I not say it on radio Biafra here that he's corrupt? I will do that uh, mess later on. I'm too upset with our people, the way they reason. Let me bring this program to an end, please. I have a few announcements to make. It has come to our knowledge 
that some coordinators are administering group oaths. We don't take oaths by group. It's one person after the other, please. And we also understand that some people are not doing things the way they're supposed to be. Please, you must follow our procedure. If you are relinquished of your position, you leave your position, please, and rejoin. Don't be saying that the national coordinator gave me something else to do. That type of nonsense is for zoo, Nigeria. Because in Biafra land, you may lose election. And once you lose, you just go to your house, you congratulate the, your opponent, you go to your house and you sit down. All this nonsense, I won't have it. I won't. But all the same, I thank all of you from all over the world who listen to us this very evening. Everything we say is born out of love and not hate. Everything we try to do is motivated by our overriding desire to create a wonderful and a beautiful nation called Biafra. That the world, our children, even those who died in the course of this very struggle will be very proud of. We must remember those that died and for their sake we must continue to push ahead until Biafra is restored. We are not doing it because we want people to be poor, to be, to be begging for visa to visit Biafra land, to be able to survive. No. We are doing it because it is the right thing to do. The suffering is too much. The pain is almost intolerable and we must bring this misery to an end. That is why we insist we maintain, we reaffirm dedicatedly every blessed day that Biafra is our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. Because Elohim, Chukwokita Biafra Purimingerinde, is our God. I thank you very much for listening from the bottom of my heart, I assure you. And from me, from here, it is good evening. <laughs>